Hello, everybody. How are you tonight? Tonight. I am Mike. And I am Jay. Jay will be here in just a second. He is dropping the kids off at the pool, taking the Browns to the Super Bowl, going to the high heavens place where the brown pants are worn. I don't know what I was going to say there. Jay, I'll be here in just a minute. I might have to go do that myself soon. I had some Japanese about 25 minutes ago, and it was spicy. And now so am I. How are you guys doing? How's everybody's day? How's your Wednesday? How's your life? How are things? How are you? Hola, DJ Mexicano. Hello, my friend. I don't think Kanye is going to make it for vice president this year, JK. I, I don't think that worked out for him last time. I don't know why he did that. I don't know why he does anything he does. I don't think anyone does. You know, at some point in, in like, you can only get so genius before you have to start doing it. I'm just going to do weird shit that like, you know what I mean? Doesn't make sense to anybody because that's the only way I know to look smart. Aaron Rodgers has been doing that lately. I don't know what's going on with him. He's being a weird guy. I don't enjoy it, to be honest with you. Oh, Matt says life is fantastic, and that makes me happy, dude. That makes me so happy. Andre says fish sticks. That makes me happy, too, for sure. Uh, absolutely. Um, yeah, we got a fun show tonight. We're going to do our top 10 movies, not just horror movies, but movies of 1991. You know, there's a shockingly low amount of horror movies that came out that year. Some good ones. Some great ones, but a shockingly low amount of them in general, for sure. I like that. I like that, Daryl. Wham Maniacs. What's up, my fellow Wham Maniacs? I'm going to put my finger in you. Yeah. I'm going to work on that promo, for sure. Absolutely. Blu-ray, I have watched good movies lately. I watched Night Swim. That was good. I lied to you. That was awful. I watched... Uh, Hannibal today for a video I'm writing for another company. Um, Hannibal's weird, man. Hannibal's a weird ass movie, but like it's no, it's a terrible Sansa the Lamb sequel, right? But it's a good movie by itself. It's like Halloween ends, really. Like this is a terrible follow up to the last film, but as a standalone movie, it's good. Anthony Hopkins still rips, but he's like watered down. It's like you expect to see Hannibal Lecter on the loose in the city doing crazy stuff. And instead, he's just like walking around and it's just like Anthony Hopkins. He's no longer scary, but he has some cool ass lines in that movie and he does some cool things. And the special effects when they make Ray Liotta eat his own brains. Oh, my God. By replacing Clarice Starling from Jodie Foster to Julianne Moore, who I love, was just a weird choice. The whole movie feels weird. It feels like it's an alternate universe. Sons of the Lambs. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I've not watched TV series. I've only seen like two episodes of it. I fell asleep. It's not because it was bad. It's because I was tired. Um, but yeah, dude, Gary Oldman. I didn't know that that was Gary Oldman bebop boop until like halfway through the movie. And like, that's crazy. It looks like Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Seriously. Somebody said that on Twitter. I was like, dude, that was exactly what I thought. I actually almost tweeted a picture of the dude of Gary Oldman's character from Hannibal. And I was like, Hey, you got to say what you want to about Mitch McConnell, but he's rocking the shit out of this one. But I felt bad. I felt like that would be mean, even though Mitch McConnell's hurt in this human being by all counts. I still would have felt bad for it. You know, I still would have felt really terrible for it for sure. Uh, Hannibal is worth a watch ABC. It's just like, it's not, it's not a good, not, it's not a good Sons of the Lambs sequel, but it's a good movie. It's all right. It's just a, it, what if Ridley Scott made Sons of the Lambs and it's not as good as the other one, but it's still pretty good. You know, still not bad. Dude, Jordan, you're right. So many tears. So many tears. I saw that movie two seats away from my father-in-law, and nobody wants to cry in front of their father-in-law. 182 viewers. Blink for life. Blink 182 life for life. Um, but I watched that. My daughter's here. My uh, nephew's next to him, and he's a Marine. And then my stepdad's next to him. We're watching on a Christmas day. And that whole movie, I managed not to cry, man. And I'm a crier. I will cry during movies. The whole movie, I managed not to cry until that last line dropped. And I won't say what it is for people who haven't seen it. But I was like, ah, ah, ah. and then like the tears just started falling out of my face. And I was like, don't look at me. Speaking of people I don't want to look at, this morose motherfucker right here. Is this burning an eternal flame? Close was your eyes, huh? That you were singing on toilet just now? Yeah, I was. I was trying. To, I was making sure that I could get that turd out because it just wouldn't squeeze out. I hope sucky. you wiped. I didn't. I ran. I ran right up here and sat down in the puddle of mud that's collecting at my undies. 
I don't care. Man, I wish I could be there to suck your fingers. Right <laughs> I know he's like, I wish I could eat that shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Don't flush. By the way, uh, I did do. I actually, I watched the whole fucking thing. I, I watched that whole Cat Williams two hour and forty six minute interview. Oh wow, yeah, it was, that was badass. Nice. No, it was really good. Like he was like, I didn't think. I thought I'd be bored because that's just a real long ass time. Like I thought yeah. it would just kind of go off the rails. And not do it, it was consistently good, and it like it kept your attention the entire time. And he's extreme, like he's actually really articulate. I didn't even know he was that articulate. But some of the shit he was saying, a lot of people uh, are like, he's got receipts for it all. And and not to mention the fact they said everybody that he mentioned in that video, they're gonna go out and they've called him like a salty, he drug addict, all this stuff, but they won't call him a liar because he's got all the receipts to prove it. And like yeah. I even went to like he was talking about one specific thing he was saying that uh was about Mark Curry and Steve Harvey, which I forgot who Mark Curry was, and I looked at him, I was like, Oh, it's hanging with Mr. Cooper. And he's like, yeah, he goes, Steve Harvey stole his whole fucking shit. He stole everything that Mark Curry, like all of it. He goes, hanging with Mr. Cooper came out. Then Steve Harvey did a show exactly like Mark Curry. He goes, he went to one of his shows and stole his whole bit. And then I went over to a Mark Curry video where he gave an interview in 2016 or 17 where he did say that. He goes, yeah, I confronted Steve at like the Def Comedy Jam 25 because he said, if you steal from me, I'm just going to step up to you. I'm not going to fucking go through your people, your managers. And there's like a video, like you can see him like, they're like when they come out on stage on Def Jam 25, like in the back, it looks like him and Mark Curry are having like a lot of words being exchanged between them. Yeah, I, I have to watch it. I, I do have to watch it. I will say we talked about this at the Patreon stream, the Cat Williams thing, and I was giving him shit because I saw a video of him on a tarmac acting like an idiot wearing a mink jacket in front of a plane and was like, I want to play full, full, full five on five full court bat or one on one full court basketball with you. And it's like nobody does that, by the way. Yeah. You don't need a full court to play one on one. But uh apparently that video that I was talking about that I was talking about was like five years old. Well, so I don't know yeah. anything about it. I have to watch it. I, I just I, I've seen I've seen what Kevin Hart said about it, and what Kevin Hart said about it made sense to me when he was like, "Cat Williams wants to blame like, like uh, uh you know uh, uh call, say that I'm like I'm the white people's person or whatever and all this stuff and could talk about white people and all this." But no. he was like, "But he was like, here's the thing, Cat Williams. He was like, you were their person. You were their guy. You were set up to be a star, and you just didn't do the work. You got hooked on drugs and you fucked yourself up, and well, now you want to blame everybody else." He and also I was like, that well, makes sense. He said Kevin Hart was a complete industry plan, and he also was a liar. He never mentioned white people at all. What he said was, yeah. he said. This was old. This is before. Oh, no, he said, if you look at Kevin Hart, he's like the idea that he just went all of a sudden and everyone says that there was like lines lining up in L.A. for him. So that never happened. He goes, I was around in L.A. He was an East Coast guy. He's like, he's an absolute industry plan. He has been for years. And he said, every role that Kevin Hart got, it came across my desk first. And I literally told him, I said, he said, OK, I'm not comfortable with like the overtones of gay stuff that you guys want to do with these characters. But Kevin was cool with that. Kevin didn't mind getting fucked in the ass for a role. He, and he's like, and guess what? I will. And so has to be like he's homophobic. No, he's well, he didn't. I mean, he doesn't hate gay people. He just didn't want to have roles where a black guy is getting raped in the bathroom. Like what's going to happen in the original script with Bunny Mike and Friday after next. He just didn't like it. He thought it was a why stupid, not? He thought rape was not funny, whether it be man or woman. So he thought it was a stupid thing. Why not? But, no, I'm just well, kidding. I'm, well, so, the thing, was, so the thing was with Kevin Hart, though, is he was just like, he's like, listen, he's like, he goes, you never see me and Kevin in the same building at all, ever, because he won't be in the same building with me. He knows better because he said, they'll fucking talk about me behind my back, but they know that I was there. He goes, I will say at the end of the day, my butthole is a virgin and my mouth's never been on a penis. And he goes, when I got, when hey, I bitch, talked, I was just, I was just joking, buddy. It was a joke. Was no, a, it was well, a, it was a gimmick. Gimmick? No, gimmick. No. But he, did say, he said he got canceled when he talked about Weinstein and R. Kelly back before it was all known what they were doing. And he said, they canceled me back then. He says, because I know what was going on. Like, and I've always been in a position uh, that I can see all the shit they're doing and they'll say, oh, he's a druggie and all this stuff. And he said, they're all full of shit. He goes, Cedric, the entertainer's not funny. He doesn't write his own shit. He goes, Steve Harvey is a bumpkin from from the country that stole Mark Curry's whole shit and then went after Bernie Ma Mac and tried to steal roles from Bernie Mac. He must have fucking sold ketchup to women with, with white gloves on. Ketchup popsicles to women with white gloves on this interview because everyone I know who's seen it's been like, I believe him, yo. I yeah, don't dude, know why, but I do. Because <laughs> the, the thing is, like, dude, he's real. Like, it's like, like, yeah, he's arrogant. Like, he's you got, can't say you weren't on drugs though when there's live video on the internet of you trying to fight a 15 year old boy that, and getting your ass kicked. Somebody by said he was like 18. I don't know the actual, I didn't even look up in the actual <laughs> real story. But, <laughs> like but, but a lot better. of people said that an 18 year old in their prime probably kick anybody's ass to think they're fucking tough. I mean, it's just no, like, the video it, this is a small, small I know. Time. Yeah, well, he's also like five foot. Well, he looks like he works in Santa's sh shop. Why are you trying to start fights with teenagers, man? I don't know what he was. I, but I will say, but specifically on the interview though, he, like, yeah, he called them on and he said they're gatekeepers. And he said, look, I, and the, he mentioned, one guy i i forgot all about this dude he was a white guy 25 years ago 
that was on BET, something Owens, like uh, Gary Owens or something like that. And I remember seeing that guy and he got really popular with the BET crowd and the black crowd and stuff like that. It was really, it was crazy because he was like this white guy and you wouldn't think he'd be that, that over with him. And he's like, what about him? What about Owens? He said, he's been in comedy for 25 years and he's white and he's not gotten over. But Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, and that something smiley guy that played the crackhead Santa, he said, those yeah. guys gatekeep. He said, they keep everybody out because they're, they're a clique. He also talked about two heat. The one of the biggest things he said, he said something about, uh, uh, sh sh by the way, Sharp did a great fucking job, dude. Shannon Sharp is an awesome interviewer. Shannon Sharp was like, David, am about I wrong? Did that video not exist on the internet? Did that video not exist? Because I'm pretty sure I watched it with my own eyes. I, don't, I, think, I think there was a lot. I don't know. I know what you're talking about, though. I, I did see where he got his ass kicked by a, like a teenager, but yeah. there was like he got into some kind of physical altercation. But I will say at the but Shannon Sharp asked him, he's something about Dave Chappelle because he said, I know you keep Dave, Dave Chappelle in like high regard. And he's like, you know, about that $50 million he walked away from. He goes, I goes, I don't need to explain why I walked away from $50 million. Everybody knows why he walked away. But he said sometimes, and he goes, I walked away from $50 million because sometimes you got to tell Diddy no. And he goes, Diddy Basically, likes What party. it has to do with that is that he says that he, he wasn't on drugs and all that, but there's video of him acting a fucking fool at the height of his fame. You yeah. can't, there's some things, and I got to watch it. I, again, I got to watch it's it. It's a good interview. But I'm just saying, like, just because you, to, like, and I, I really do got to watch it because apparently I'm way off on this. But to me, you fucking up your own career and then showing up 10 years later and being like, actually, it was this person's fault and this person's fault and this person's fault. To me, that's just whiny bitch well, behavior. The, but the I have to watch it. Well, the I reason why, it. but the reason why I did it though, like he said, he got blackballed for a long time. And he said, not to mention the fact that the reason why he came out, he was well, on the Shannon finish. Sharp, when he's on the Shannon Sharp uh, uh, show, is he said he was on, he came on. He goes, I'm not trying to promote my shit at all. I don't need nobody to promote it because barely he promotes his own shows. He makes a lot of money. He, like he's been doing, yeah. he said he's on his like 11th or 12th Netflix special. He said, How many Cedric got? None. But he's like, on the on top of that, though, he said, the reason he, why, But like to come out like, and be like, but, This person didn't he say but, ludicrous? Like, no, no, that no, guy. I, I, I didn't. I, somebody said, ludicrous. I don't, maybe I missed that part, but I didn't hear him say ludicrous. He said something about ludicrous had to, like, I saw somebody that was recapping and said that he said, that Ludacris had to change his way. Like, it was like an Illuminati thing going on. I don't fucking know. Now, do I believe that Hollywood is built on a pile of perverted shit? Yeah. yeah. And do I think that he probably saw a lot of that? Yeah. And do I think that he came in contact with superstars that were willing to put their butthole up to have it fucked to get roles? Yeah. Do I think that he was telling the truth don't about talking Weinstein? talking on Saturday after the football games. Are yeah, I mean, that's that's, my business. Well, we do that for fun, but we're not doing it for roles. But I will say at the end of the day, yeah, I think I don't think he's lying. And, and the fact is... Uh, he's not, he wasn't, he's not wrong. I mean, he said that he, he said he came on the show initially with Shannon Sharp because he heard that guy smiley and I can't remember his first name. And again, you know, I can only remember him as the crackhead Santa from Friday after next was on there talking shit. And he said, I came on here to, to set the record straight. And he goes, yeah. I, I asked you all if I could come on there. You didn't pay me. Like he didn't get money for it. He just came on there to set there. He goes, I don't have any products. I'm not trying to push anything. And then he said that the and then actually Ice Cube backed up has what he, he said. Shown, has he shown proof of anything that he said? No, joke he just that, says he has. No, no, no. The it. stealing jokes. He's got the the Cedric the Entertainer stole a joke from him in 1998 when he was doing BET. He had a joke about a car, like it was his big joke that he closed with. He said in two, three years later, because he said Cedric the Entertainer thought I was a nobody, I was a nothing comedian. He went to my show, he congratulated me, he said, "Oh, it was a great set." Then all of a sudden on Kings of Comedy, he does the same fucking joke, except he changed the car to a spaceship. And then they have side-by-side -side proof. He did. Mark Curry, yeah. Mark Curry's jokes, they showed Steve Harvey stealing his shit too. The thing about, and Ice Cube backed up what he said about the, uh, he said the Money Mike thing in Friday After Next. He said, they never were to give it to Smiley. Smiley fucking lied. Smiley was trying to say, oh, why am I the Santa? I don't want to be the Santa. Uh, uh, Cat was supposed to be the Santa. He goes, no, I, uh, Cat Williams said, I wrote all the fucking lines for Magic Mike. I picked out his outfit. I got on the car. I did all that shit. I put time and effort into that. And Ice Cube said that was true. He said, no one ever said, ben, you know, like uh, Cat was like, you don't watch a Ben Affleck and a Matt Damon movie. And it's like, oh, well, they go, they're, they're just going to switch roles. He goes, that didn't happen. So he's really pissed about that. He goes, all that guy did, Smiley was walk around, be like, I shouldn't be no fucking Santa. And look at my face half covered and shit they don't even see who i am and it, it, like he, it was it was crazy dude it's it actually is a really really entertaining interview and to be fair like just all that shit that's coming out about uh in hollywood and it, he's probably onto something dude especially with the epstein shit he was all oh, yeah. and he sure. even said he was like listen liars are gonna lie why do liars lie we don't know but they do and he said the, the fact is because shannon sharp's like well, why are they lying though uh cat why are they telling and he goes because liars lie that's what they do. Why would they tell you the truth? I mean, some of that sounds them? like a good soundbite, but again, like anybody can say anything they want to. Like, every, yeah, of course, but, everybody's going to be like, yeah, fuck Hollywood. But like, I mean, 
Well, did he also weren't you a part of that? But he also, but but he's got receipts. No, he wasn't a part. He wasn't doing this when he was making money. No, but he wasn't. He wasn't a part of it. That's his point. That's why he got blackballed. He said he wasn't on those shows. He said I wasn't pretty sure he comedy. He was. He was a huge name. But yeah, and that's what I was thinking too. And then the trajectory just went. He went away. Because he yeah. he stopped getting roles, and they said that he said that every time he would go up for a role, he goes, uh, "Smiley would be there, and he was being sent by said and, and Steve." And he, and he was and he goes, being beat out by another guy. And it wasn't being beat out that he was keeping tracks on making sure that those fucking roles weren't going to him. Like that's what he was saying. He goes, "I was getting blackballed because they knew I got the secrets. I got all the information on, and he's got the receipts." I don't know. I just, it's just hard for me to just like believe somebody at face value who just crops up out of nowhere. And it's like, actually it's everybody else's fault. Like that victim mentality just doesn't, I well, don't like that shit. I don't know. But I gotta I mean, watch it. I gotta watch yeah, it. I, gotta well, watch I it. like the receipts are coming out about it. And, and like, I don't know anything about the, the P Diddy trying to do it in the butt. I don't know if that was, I don't know. <laughs> That's what he said. That's was what he P. said. Diddy? Yeah. He said, he said it a few times. He said, listen, I, I had to walk away from $50 million because P Diddy likes the party. And sometimes you got to say no. Like yeah. it was like paying you for sex. And, 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 and like, that's what he said was going to, that's what he wanted. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, man, there's a lot of crazy shit going on with that. That whole interview was insanely wild. Uh, yeah. and, and he was talking, you know, there, there was a lot of stuff in there. I, I don't know. It just, he sounded genuine, dude. Like it didn't sound like some crack pot on the fucking street, like trying to suck some dick for crack. Like, I mean, was, I don't, this interview must be amazing because I've never it's got seen, four, it's got I've 40 fucking seen, million. It's got, 40 oh, I know it's views. huge. I know it's huge, but I've never seen so many, so many people be like, I believe that guy, no matter what the fuck he says. And you're a piece of shit. If you don't like, that's what I'm reading in the comments right now. It's like, crazy. No, I, no, you know, I mean, if you've never like seen Dick it, you can't, you can't blame nobody. If they never seen it, they never seen it. But I mean, it is what yeah. it is. But at the end of the day, yeah, I feel like, like he, he just seemed really genuine, dude. And like, I'm not saying that like Shannon Sharp has got a bullshit detector, but it just seemed like he, even he was like. I mean, damn, I, I don't know. Like, it sounds really reasonable what you're saying here. And they and he asked a little bit about Chris Tucker, and he said about the smoky thing and not coming back for next Friday and all that stuff. He goes, yeah, back then it was the pre-Epstein Tucker. And now we got the Epstein Tucker. And I was like, oh, shit. So, oh, I like, yeah. and that's why that's even Shannon was like, oh, my God. So like, dude. Yeah. Well, and then, and then he said something about Steve Harvey. He said, said like, you know, Steve Harvey. And, like, yeah, I used to like Steve Harvey, and I don't mind his stand-up now and again. But, you know, he's like, oh, he's that's what he said. He hadn't done a stand-up in years. And there's a reason for yeah. that. But he said, he, but he said, uh, Steve Harvey tried to play that homeless shit. He goes, I was homeless. That was my story. He goes, I left in Ohio when I was 13 years old and went to Miami. And Wait, I, was I saw, I, David, I saw this motherfucker on video talking. The dude was on drugs, allegedly, but it looked like it to me. Well, like, I, it's not, you just I, can't erase history because he's a hot topic right now. I mean, come on. That. Well, he he said on the thing. Well, he did talk. That about guy's the, had more opportunity and money and shows and Netflix specials and stand ups and still, movies than anybody well. in this room right now. He's so like well. he, everybody, everybody like, no, we're gonna stand for cat. Don't I think, say. I mean, I want to see it for myself. Yeah, That's I think, that, I, think just, I think they're calling out. I think that people are just like talking, like they don't like theft, they don't like plagiarism, they don't like perversion. And if these guys are doing that shit, and they want. Who does? But who's to say he wasn't a part of that while it worked he, for him? Because and now that it's not, I, he decided he would have outed himself because. Because the, the reason why I don't think he was is because all these people, first off, he would have been sued for defamation, which isn't happened. But and they would have dragged say, him down with him. How are you going to say, I'm going to come out and I, I don't do that shit. Like, I speak to people face to face. But he's in uh, Shannon Sharp's room talking about everybody. He, because, he not came, in the room. because he said he came on Shannon Sharp after that smiley guy came on and called him out and started saying shit on him. And that's why he did it. But he also I, said, I didn't. I, he goes, if I see him before I see but, he said, if I see Smiley before you see him again, he'll have a different tone when he talks to me. Because he said, I've, actually enjoyed, I've actually enjoyed getting a kick out of the audience right now. I haven't even seen the fucking thing yet. I'll tell you well, what. I I mean, there's, no reason, I like, there's no reason to dogpile on Mike. He's not seen it, so it don't matter. But I'm saying at the end of the day, I, what, I, I'm playing it, I'm playing devil's advocate. It's all right. I know. It's a really, it's a really <laughs> fascinating. It's a really, really fascinating I got, I interview. Got and I loved it, dude. I actually, I, I like. I have a problem with watching long podcasts. Like, I can't believe you guys, you guys are awesome to stick around for our goofy ass shit. Cause it gets, I get bored like after a while if it's not cool. good. And it literally flowed so good. And he was so interesting and had so many great stories. And one of the best stories he was talking about, not a great story, it's kind of shitty, but he said that thing about Steve Harvey being homeless. He's like, 25 years ago, he was touring with Mark Curry and he was making $3,000 a show five days a week. How's he homeless? Yeah, at three thousand dollars a show at five days a week, he's he's working shows, and and you're saying you're homeless and you have nowhere to live. Now, of course, Steve Harvey might be talking about he's like super super young, but you know, it, and and again and again, you could go on YouTube and Mark and Mark Curry does give the interviews. He was Did talking he, but about. It, too. I mean, like, wouldn't you call that a rat though? Like, isn't that a rat? Somebody who goes and talks about everybody's business and like on a podcast and, behind their backs. I think he only did it because he was getting called out and blackballed. And he was tired of it, and he's like, Listen, I mean, I've not seen anybody say anything about him. 
But I mean, I'm not in that. I guess. Well, so that, that, his whole point was they got a chokehold like in the in the industry where it's like yeah. if you don't go with the program, you're blackballed, you're, you're, or you're called a, a junkie, you're called you're discredited, you're all these things, and then that way yeah. it looks like you're a problem that can be pushed aside. But you know, again, like he's got receipts, dude. Like I, 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 be, I believe the guy. Like, I got do. I, 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 I feel bad for him because I do think that there is some there's some obvious, and I understand why. Like, listen, if I got fucked over for like my, no reason a failure of my own just because I wasn't playing ball game like with shit I didn't agree with. I understand that. And if you're just as talented or more talented than the people that are getting ahead of you, yeah, I'd be a little bit bitter about it too. Just, but yeah, I just the way I see it is like that's Hollywood. Like everybody knows Hollywood's cutthroat. Everybody fucks over everybody in Hollywood. That's just the business. It's the business for everybody. Right? I think he was like, exposing like criminal activity though. This shit was like fucking like there was like nasty shit going on. Like I and I think yeah. and you know Oh, yeah, we all know that goes on. For yeah, sure. well, that's what I'm saying. The water's wet, but I mean, like, I feel yeah. like nobody knew about like the high-profile people that he knows that are involved with it. And the problem is, and he said, and again, like, I want to think of top comments on the on the sharp video was like, no one's called him a liar. That if he was a liar, he'd be in suit for defamation already. <laughs> JDLA said this cold opens fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> they're all cold opens buddy they're cold shows oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no uh i i will i'll tell you what I, I i'm halfway fucking around you guys i don't know shit i just enjoy playing the playing the, the heel sometimes <laughs> but i will i will watch that uh tomorrow on the treadmill i'm gonna watch that i'm gonna i'm gonna lose 50 fucking pounds in one sitting I'm gonna, it's really good i'm, gonna, really I'm not good. gonna get off until it's over with and then i'm actually gonna get off um but no i will watch it i will watch it and i will report back As somebody said i have homework i now have homework i'm excited about it hey wolf elm street's gonna see you too dot guy Dude, hey, what's up, man? How goes it in the world of the Elm Street Wolf? Still slaying um, children? You fucking nasty shit. <laughs> we should put you on. We'll put you on blast. We got receipts. Rootin' Tootin' Texas Tootin' said that cheese game Saturday going to be cold, boy. Think about bringing some shine to the tailgate. Should I make wieners or a whole deer? Well, now we know Rootin' Tootin' lives in Kansas City. Yep. We're learning about this. What man. the goddamn you got the great state of Texas in your name for, Rootin' Tootin'? Take your ass back to Kansas and go chase tornadoes <laughs> with your wiener. Stop talking and bring wieners. I don't know why they want no goddamn deer. Didn't you hear about That's the true. flesh-eating disease those fuckers That's carry? True. Shit. Yeah. Miami. Maybe, apparently those zombie deers are out there. Man, I'll tell you what. I am no longer on the Dolphins bandwagon. I, I had a really good, really good Saturday. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to put a little bit extra on this game. I'm feeling myself. I'm feeling pretty nice. I I, I, I talked about the last stream about how I think the Dolphins are keeping their good shit for the playoffs. So they went out there and they laid a fucking egg and they lost me some money. So I have officially lost faith in the Dolphins. I think that they're going to go to Kansas City. And I don't think Kansas City is all that good either. But uh, I think you're going to have a good night rooting tootin'. That's that's my prediction. Well, Kansas City is where the law dog Wyatt Earp himself kept the law. Uh, so I gotta go for the Chiefs, not uh, because I hate that one. I, I absolutely I, I hate guns, I hate yeah. the fucking Mahomes TikTok fucking dynasty. I hate that shit. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I, I was going to tell you uh, one of the streamers I watched, uh, okay. Doctor Disrespect. You know, I, I think he's great, but uh, he was talking about uh, the Cowboys and the Green Bay Packers, and he's a big football fan too. His team is the 49ers, but he he actually his prediction, his bet was because they they put five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or whatever they bet a lot. He said he thinks that Green Bay is actually going to go in and beat the shit out of uh, Hell people. yeah. But then the guy that he was talking to, the other streamer, Tim the Tadman, was like, because he's a Cowboys fan. This is what he said, dude. I, I got to be honest. Good. Like, it's not a bad thing. It's like, a, it's a smart thing. He said, I want my team to win because he's a Cowboy fan. Because, But he goes, I'm more scared of the of the Packers. I'd rather play Philly or anybody else coming into Dallas to, to, to play the Cowboys. But he's going to bet 500. He said he's going to no, drop between 500 and 1,000 to hedge his bets. On Green Bay beating the Cowboys, so he said. If yeah, I, yeah. he said, I call it hedging my happiness. So if I, <laughs> so he said, if my team wins and I don't win any money, I'm still happy. But if my team loses, at least I get that extra. And then you know nobody likes that idea. Like, why are you going to bet against your team? Because yeah, because you yeah, can win like five grand team. if you bet a thousand bucks, you can win like five grand. Yeah, uh, I'm going to put a little money line action on the Packers. I think the Packers can go into Dallas, but I will say this. The Packers are playing with house money. We are not supposed to be here. I thought the Packers season was over 17 goddamn times this year. I can't believe we're in the fucking playoffs. I'm going to be sitting pretty at 430 Sunday watching that game. I don't like I'm not I'm not going to have a, a stress about me. That's a lie. I'm going to be shitting my fucking pants, but I think they can actually beat the Cowboys in Dallas. And uh, if they don't, I'm going to have to hear all the how about them Cowboys and all the annoying ass shit that comes out of that corny ass football team. Uh, uh, but maybe the Packers playoffs. Win. You're talking about the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> How about them, Kyle? Shut the fuck up, Jim. Kyle, how long do you think you would last in a horror movie? Good evening, mates. 
Would you do a review of Poor Things? Well, yes. uh, well you're talking about let's us? take a look at our bank accounts. Yeah, I, was gonna say, <laughs> I didn't know there was a documentary about us. Just watch it on fucking YouTube. Uh, I'm going to yeah, do a, a show with Shannon Sharp and talk about why it's everybody else's fault. I would love, dude, I'd love going to Shannon Sharp. So I, 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 I want to give it, I want to talk to him about, I was like, what do you really feel about Stephen A. Smith? You think he's an asshole? Like for real. Everybody like, does. That guy's uh, but anyway, um, you know, I love Shannon Sharp though. I do. I think he's great. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about his brother, Sterling, too. I, it's weird that Sterling. That's his bro. Oh, fuck. That's his brother, Packer. Yeah, Sterling Sharp. Yeah. Um, I I probably five minutes. We last in a horror movie five minutes. I'd like to say I'd last the whole time. No. Um, but much like in bed, it probably won't. Fiction can be fun, can't it? <laughs> uh poor things. I've not seen it yet. It sounds like one I'm gonna want to watch at home and not go to the theater for. Is there a lot of weird sex in that one? I, I hear what is that? Um, Poor, Poor things. things. It's Emma Stone, Willem Dafoe. Uh, it's, oh, it's yeah, one of those yeah. artsy fartsy movies for sure. Oh, yeah, I'll, I mean, yeah, um, we were, I mean, yeah. I just I, is it out? Is it available to stream? Uh, no, I think it's only in theaters. Uh, um, well, fuck. We, we should do that one day though. We should have a nice double feature of the weird sex movies from 2023. We can watch that and then back it up with Saltburn. Watch I wanna, yeah, I want to. Uh, yeah, let's get all that yeah. icky girl stuff out of the way and just watch that yeah. big dick just fucking ride that dude's ass. And that's what I'm talking about. about. Fuck. Courtney Reed, Browns over Texans. Hey, dude. I disagree. I do like the Texans that Courtney. Chiefs over Dolphins. I do agree with you there. Bills over Steelers. Yes. Cowboys over Packers. Shut the fuck up. Rams <laughs> over good. Lions. Yeah. Oh, oh. I'm going to go Lions there. I think MCDC has been waiting for this for a long time. Eagles over Bucks. I have the Bucks in that game. The Eagles have been playing like shit lately, Courtney. I don't know, man. Yeah. I think the Eagles are ready to officially Harry carry themselves. I don't know what the, I don't know what their deal is. Like they've dropped like every what is like four. This is like the fifth game in a row they've dropped. I don't even know what they're doing yeah. over there. Like goddamn, you guys need to listen to that Fly Eagle Fly song some more. They love an Eagles album. Goddamn, man, bad. Listen. It's because their coach is all over on sidelines doing this shit, and acting a fucking fool. Greg Harris turning forty next month. Hey, all right, man. Me too. I don't know anybody that old. God damn, Greg, you're so fucking old, dude. Shit. <laughs> Jay turns 40 next month, too. I uh, know. That's what I said. What do you want to do for your birthday? You want to go to the petting zoo? No, I'll probably just have a sugar packet or two. By the way, the petting zoo is just my bathroom. I turn off the lights and Jay comes in and I just let him feel around for a few minutes. It's his birthday special. God, I need a magnifying glass. And a <laughs> Somebody lost If you something. can find it, you can suck it. Uh, Delta 9 just kicked in. Uh, what's Delta 9? What is that? Is that the new COVID? Is COVID uh, back? I don't know what Delta 9 is. I hope I don't have it. <laughs> Delta 9, uh, <laughs> the airplane, the ninth airplane of Delta. He's like waiting for it. He just got there. Good luck on oh. your air travels. No, I don't know what Delta 9 is. I, actually, Delta, because I've been playing I Cyberpunk, when they, they're they like, we got a Delta out of here. It means get out of here. But in the future, like in 2077, it means like, because we got a Delta. Look, we got to leave. Really? That's so yeah, corny. I know, I know. All I remember is smelt it delta hey happy early birthday greg you fucking handsome son of a bitch michael park 10 i binged echo oh. and i thought it was fairly decent daredevil only shows up once only once oh, fuck man. me with a spoon i love how uh, I, I love it all the promotional materials he looks like he's in it a lot so yeah uh, talk uh, about misleading bullshit kingpin honestly the best part dude yeah, so yeah. we had a streamer for that we had a screener for it and I thought, you know what? Maybe I will watch this one. Maybe this is because I saw the tr those ads were fucking hilarious. Like you can tell Marvel's is they're trying to advertise what Jay and I have been saying they should be for fucking months and years. They're like, as soon as the every trailer comes on, it's like TVMA mm -hmm. only for adults. Like they are fucking selling that TVMA as hard as shit. And the whole trailer is fucking Kingpin just like raging. And they're like, oh, fuck, I want to watch this. And they're like, who is Echo? And then they found out it's, this, it's another ancillary character. Everybody uh, fucking, asked everybody asked who the fuck is echo like that yeah like, there was an echo when echo was announced why don't you just make a daredevil kingpin show <laughs> no, why, why the gave... fuck won't you do because that they, because there's an agenda we're water boys <laughs> this is crazy this is boys down. no yeah, I, that, that's why like literally what they said echo is gonna be our next show i heard echo echo like it's <laughs> the trap crickets. song nobody fucking gave a trap. shit but yeah i listen uh, i vincent diafrano is amazing of course he was gonna be great i mean He's, he's great dude like he's, he's made for that role yeah they used him in the trailer way more than they did echo i hear she's good in it though but yeah I'm, i might actually watch that one i don't know jk new year new me no more crow questions best guys good. guys best and worst worst best and worst celeb encounters mike your idea for a new year slasher franchise is absolute cinema dude i got a good fucking idea for a new year's horror movie mm. and I, I just put this on twitter but let me throw it out let me throw it out there and just see if you 
put it back, you know? Just let me just throw it out there to you a little bit. Um, a New Year's horror slasher movie. And the idea is that the killer kill, shows up and kills people the second that they give up on their New Year's resolutions. So the second they reach for that cigarette, the second they put that cupcake in their fat fucking mouths like I do, the second they give up on their rev resolutions, the killer fucking murders the shit out of them. And so that's that. That's basically the idea. I like it. So is the killer Tony Robbins? Yeah. <laughs> so is <laughs> the killer the literally like that? Like, it. Is he a personal, like, like, is he supposed to like help you get through all these things and when you don't do it, he gets mad? Like a personal I, I trainer and then just kills you? Now I have to redo the whole script. Fuck Tony me. Robbins. Right. Thanks, buddy. The killer. No, I mean, it would be fun. It's like a goofy ass yeah. thing. You know, I think it'd be fun. Well, like, and I, I just don't know, should he be a supernatural thing? Like, he just magically. Have you seen Tony Robbins? Like a stalker that's slasher. Supernatural. supernatural. Yeah. That's all I'm like. Or like, like Joel Richard Austin, Simmons when you don't really put scary. money in the collection plate, he shows up at your door in a magical <laughs> yeah. angelic light and then kills you. Yeah. yeah. Or if you don't tip well, it just, it just keeps stretching out. Yeah, like it, final if you did supernatural, you could do go final destination territory and have, but like, I don't know. It's a thought. Uh, Best celebrity. You could, it, you could call it. You could call it click clock. Because <laughs> that's the the clock thing. Click clock. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, I'm trying to think of the best celebrity encounter I ever had. I've had some. I've, I have had some good ones. Um, I know you're bad. You if you don't put the, you got to put your worst one because you know what that one's going to be. You're thinking it's the Seether guy, right? No, dude. I'm thinking of like the fucking. Well, maybe it wasn't your guy? worst one, but no, that was bad too. But I think the most cringiest one is Michael Bean. Oh, that's true. That's true. Uh, that the Michael Bean, most people know that story. That is up there. It's pretty bad. But the most embarrassing one I actually have is uh, the lead singer of Story of the Year. They were playing a show with Metallica at Rupp Arena when we were like 16, 17. And me and my crusty butt friends were walking around the mall because that's all we had to do. And he was in the he was in Wendy's eating fucking Wendy's with his girlfriend. That was bad. And I just walked up to him dead ass, stuck my hand in his Annoying. fucking face while he's sitting down trying to eat some Wendy's. And he was literally like fucking mid bite, and I was like, "Dude, I love your shit." And I had my hand in his face, and he he literally took the French fries and went, and then like shook my hand. I was like, "Thanks, man." I Touch my it. finger, you fat nerd, and let me talk to my woman. So dickhead on my. I know what Jay's worst celebrity encounter was because I was there. Yeah, it just happened. <laughs> that shit was. So, so I mean, it's not really fair to even talk about it because it just happened. It really wasn't the worst. It was just <laughs> It was awkward. It was like, uh, uh, it was uh, when I saw Doug Bradley walking out uh, from the convention center. That we oh, I was going at. with Jimmy Eat World guy. That wasn't, I thought that was a great celebrity encounter. That, you were the only one embarrassed. Drunk. That was, uh, yeah, really and I was having a good goddamn time with my encounter. <laughs> I'm sorry that you weren't having a great time. I saw the video the next day. You uh, did not. Yeah, and I wish I'd <laughs> saved that because let me tell you what, when you, I was, I was shit faced drunk, but I was having a great time. That was a great encounter for me. Maybe it wasn't for other people, but I was on, I, I thought I was on point. But listen, because uh, I, I I'll get to that one. But I, with the Doug Bradley one, I just happened to that one is like uh, he was leaving the Scarefest convention, and I didn't get a chance to talk to him. I've been a pussy all day, and I didn't want, I was all nervous and shit to go up and say hello. And uh, we had a great couple of uh, subscribers that came up. They actually got me his autograph, and so it was amazing. And and he was like, yeah, he was like, stop tell him to stop being a pussy. Because I'm just a pussy, you know. I was like, no, you're the fucking goddamn overlord of the underworld. I mean, it's not just something that you just go up and shake hands with, okay? I have to prepare myself. Calm down, dog. But no, <laughs> I anyway, wish you said that to him. I know I should have, but I, I I didn't say anything. And we were outside smoking outside, uh, and he walks right down the breezeway, and I see him. And it was the dude. It was so fucking pathetic. I was like that, like that fucking like loser kid that like calls out for the girl that got away. I was like, Doug, Doug. <laughs> it was so awful. He didn't even like look at me twice. Mike actually got to touch his fucking arm. It was like, hey, Doug, and he was like, hey, hello. And I was like, God damn it! That should have been my moment. I, I should have touched him. And then stole was, valor. And then when he went out, he was like, I was like, Doug, Doug. I was like, oh my god. Like as the words were leaving my mouth, I could taste the toxic shit on my tongue. Cause it was so cringy. That was really bad. I got really embarrassed about that. Um, and then my best Liberty encounter. Yeah. Well, I, you know what? The Jimmy world when I listen, he just a dude, I was treating him like a dude. Like I was like, Hey man, look, do this fucking thing for us. Like, please. And he was like, uh, we watched a movie. I was like, it's not a question, dude. It's a, it's not, let me, a, let me like, set the table a little bit. Though. No, it's, like, I, don't, I, I already ripped the curtain off. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> there's a place by Bogart's. Uh, there's a venue, a small, like, uh, like a little punkish kind of venue in uh, uh, Cincinnati. And around, yeah, yeah. you can go around the back, and you can. The band has to go out that, that way. That was my first meet. concert with you all. Yeah, you wait by the buses, and like the band will come out. And this lead singer, Jimmy Eat World, the sweet dude, you got to see him. Like he's got this really like nice hair guy. part. Um, 
like really sweet looking dude, you know, uh, he comes out and he's like, hi, I'm Jimmy from Jimmy Eat World. And we're like, hey, man, what's up? It's nice to meet you. It's like, uh, you know, and the normal is like, hey, can I get a picture with you? Sure. So. I think I was holding the camera when you went. No, to, you weren't. No, was April was holding. Ab- no, April. No, was, April Abby. Oh, that wasn't April. That was before April. That yeah, was, it was um, Abby. It was Abby. Dark. Yeah, dark. Was, no, yeah. was that her name? I don't fucking know. It was some girl. Uh, Abracia. Uh, whatever no. it was. Uh, Naproxen. One of those... Neosporin. <laughs> <laughs> Naproxen. <laughs> um, she was Jay's date to the concert, and she's holding the camera, and Jay's like, "Hey, man." So we're doing this YouTube thing, and he was like, "Could you just say get some wham up in you for the camera?" No, <laughs> dude. It was worse than that because he acted more drunk than I was. And I'm like, I'm not like giving you rocket science to figure out here, Jim. Like, it's literally this. He said, what? I said, yeah. I was like, can you look at the camera and just say, get some wham up? That's right. That's what he said. He goes, get some wham up in you. I was like, yeah, look at the camera and just say, get some wham up in you. And then that's it. And then, because, you know, we were, like, trying to get, like, some kind of, like, it would be cool for an opening. Not. You were. I was like, Jay, why the fuck are I- you on our... Why the fuck is Listen, anybody on our YouTube channel going to see the guy from Jimmy Eat World say, get Because some Opportunity video. gave us something and I seized it. <laughs> I wasn't afraid. I tried. He goes, he goes, he goes get some get some wham up in you. You're like, yes, no, get some wham no, up yeah, in you. You're like, mansplaining I, to him I was with your got, hands No, 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 no. I got fucking Stanley Kubrick with his ass because he wasn't following <laughs> direction. I said, like, we're going to do it again, Jimmy, until we get it right. It's not that hard, all right? Because I know you can play the guitar and sing right. well. You can't do it. But I was like, listen, he was like, because he was like, get some web up in you. I was like, it's not a question. I don't know what, like, you're you're saying it like, a, it's supposed to be a statement. Like a statement. Get some web He up didn't up know what the fuck, for all, for I all know, knew, we were I told him, I was like, like he's like, we no, were... he was like, say it like, like that. I was like, no, no, get some web up in you. Like, that's it. For and all he, he like, knew, dude, we were like a fucking, we were talking about how, like, uh, we were like a, a, a super, like, uh, psycho, like, Quanon channel or some know. shit like that. I, and he was uh, like, yeah, you want I, me to say your slogan? Well, we got, he was like, what do you do? And he's I, like, you would do horror movies. He's like, like, what? Like, like Michael Myers. We're trying to explain the vision of the channel to the guy from fucking Jimmy Eat World. I got what I, I said was going to do take a picture. I, I had a limited amount of time to squeeze it through his fucking goddamn <laughs> Eminem-sized brain. And then he couldn't even figure that shit out. Fuck that shit. I had no more time. So we took the footage that we had. And I said, well, you I guess no that's good enough. He had no more time. He was waiting team. to get on the fucking bus. Go get on your guy. You prima donna. I'll never <laughs> work with you again. No, it was it, like, he was a nice guy. It was, I didn't have a bad time though. It was like, all of a sudden it was like, God, dude, why'd you act like that? I was like, I don't know what you mean, man. <laughs> like, I mean, I was like, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm never going to see the fucking guy again. He don't know who I am. You probably go see him in two weeks in the fucking Indianapolis or something. Yeah, I'm shit like, hey, you road. remember this video? It <laughs> <laughs> happened like 18 years ago. Do you remember that? I wasn't giving you shit about. It. I was laughing about it. No, I you were, but you're like, you're I like, watched you're it like, sober the next day, and I was like, Jesus. I said, I Christ. had that video forever, and I wish I'd saved it on my phone because I, I think it might be on my old phone. Maybe one day if I can find it, it's it's dude, it's a gem. It's dude, such if a he could have set himself on fire from fucking awkwardness, he would have. He would have lit himself on fire. I'm surprised he didn't actually retire from music the next day. Well, you know what? It's like that one. Jimmy, I'm in the middle night now. Okay, you're supposed to help me out. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> you help me out. We're in the middle. <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ, that shit was funny as fuck though. That was really good. Hey, it's a great question. Yeah, dude, because like again, the opportunity was right in your face that you got to blow. What? What's what gonna happen? What, what's Eminem saying? People are gonna say, "Hey, these guys got you." Yeah, and then he the might have been like, maybe he, would, maybe he would have loved it. It's like, hey, you should come on my bus and I'll do an opening for your channel and stuff, and I'll write a song for it. Maybe you don't just know what advice on tour. You gotta say yes and go for the opportunities when they're in front of you because you better <laughs> lose yourself in the music. The road. <laughs> God forbid if you had Eminem. Uh, dude, I, he probably loved it. He's like, I like this fucking guy. <laughs> I waited for you for four hours in the freezing snow, and you just said no. I wouldn't have been like that guy because I'm like, some of your shit I don't even know. But come over here. <laughs> Adrian said 2024 is crap already. Car got hit and ran at Walmart. Oh, fuck, dude. That sucks, dude. Holy oh, shit. that, yeah. And obviously, you got to hit and run. Back Damn, into your vehicle Those fucking fat ass Walmart shoppers. What time was it? 3 a.m.? I knew it. <laughs> no, I, it wouldn't be three. I mean, it'd probably be like eleven. Like they don't do. I don't. Our our stores don't do twenty four hours anymore. Probably like midnight or 11, 11 o'clock. Yeah, that does suck, dude. That's a bummer. Yeah, that, sorry, man. But sometimes the year starts out shitty because the rest of it's just going to be so fucking good. You know, that's what's yeah, going to happen. Yeah, I mean, hopefully you, you have full coverage and you're all good and all. He's like, well, I don't. <laughs> okay, so that's a sensitive subject. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lee the Machine Bowers, thank you so fucking much, man. That is a very sweet, hey, thank you, man. Generous super chat. Generate, generate. Uh, generous. Uh, under thank you so much for the generous super chat. Hey. Uh, thanks, buddy. Hey, sexy fellas. Hope y'all doing good. Can Loomis and Chalice wish my brother Nolan a happy belated birthday? Much love, my friends, and my all-time favorite 1991 movie. 
is the secret of the ooze. Ooh, it's a great yeah, it's very good. Choice. Everybody loves the ooze. Everybody loves the ooze. Um, go ahead. Uh, uh, what did you say his name was? Uh, Nolan, Nolan Ryan. Ryan. Oh. Nolan, uh, listen. Nolan, it's your birthday. Or your birthday was three weeks ago, and you haven't stopped drinking since. If you stop drinking today, listen, the cumulative, the cumulative effect of the hangover will just kill you instantly. So what you want to do is you want to just become an alcoholic, all right? But you got to have a prestigious job to do it. And uh, you got to have like us, 18 year old uh, whose dad just died to fuck. Uh, Cause that's what I did. And we solved the mystery like Scooby fucking do. Uh, here's to you. Happy fucking birthday. Hope you don't get hit by a fucking bus. If you do, I'll fuck your daughter. And uh, Hey, we'll investigate your death together. All right. I'm gonna go to Nolan. Yeah. Nolan. I hope you're good at bowling. Have a good <laughs> birthday. Get a job on Monday. End of story. Nine Happy posts. birthday, Nolan. Now, get a job and don't I mean don't act like that. You know, I don't be that pussy that walks through. Oh, wish me a happy birthday, big brother. Shut up. Nobody cares about your birthday, especially your older brother. He only doing that maybe because he wants something from you. Maybe he wants like to borrow your PlayStation or something. Or your girlfriend. He wants to borrow your girl. Get off of here, Chalice. And go take your goddamn medicine, you sick ass sick effect. Anyway, happy Friend birthday, Nolan. Get a job. Shut up. Uh prophylactic. You are prophylactic. I am a walking dick. You look like a cute. <laughs> <laughs> Azteca Aguilar 04. Cowboys versus Packers. Let's go. Are you excited? I am excited. Cowboys. I'm to walk into Jerry's world, bend that old fuck over, and fuck him like he's probably fucked over 12 women he's impregnated over the Give years. it to me, Jerry. Um, uh huh. Uh huh. Give it to me, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep cut, and I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh huh. Adrian finally saw Iron Claw. Nine mm -hmm. out of ten, great. Almost busted out laughing at the guy who played Ric Flair. Definitely oh, dude, like an SNL spoop. Yeah, Purpose, purposely bad. One thousand percent. I think you're right. Purposefully bad. I don't know why they cast that guy because there's a million other guys that probably could have landed that role in a better. Like even the fucking even Will Ferrell when he was like, oh, down deep in the plums, was a better <laughs> Will Ferrell than that dude. That dude was hundred percent. You're right, an SNL spoof. But everything else about that, I think that's why even my rating went down because that guy was so. How are you gonna like? Like, like portray one of the greatest wrestlers of all time that was so iconic important into the early days of wrestling like rick flair and have like a shit performance like that i mean his body the guy's body looked good don't get me wrong and he did the athletic did shit well i mean like yeah but he has, but as far as like the acting chops he didn't have the swagger or the charisma of rick flair it didn't even like not even close to it but I'd, I'd, I'd have given it to like um he would have been too big but it would have been crazy if you'd seen like chris hemsworth show up as rick flair because he yeah, you know, I played Fat Thor. Yeah. You know, like he just played like a like a swaggerish, like kind of like over the top <laughs> asshole. Hey dude, they should have just brought Ric Flair and him, let him do his own thing. Just like yeah, hey, well, just you know, pretend I'm young. Yeah, de-aged right? him. De-aged him. Yeah. Harrison Ford is ass. Uh, and then everybody could actually tell him how he was a misogynist back in the day. But no, I uh, I'm not saying God that about damn, Ric get off of it tonight. What are we on? I'm Twitter? not saying that about Ric Flair, whore. I'm I was doing the joke about the Indiana Jones thing. God. Damn it. Ah, you don't you talk about Rick playing like that? Suck my dick. He's my uh, favorite wrestler of all time. I cried when he retired three times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get he Jimmy Eat World on here and ask him what he thinks. I, I know. Listen, I think that. Um, I don't blame that guy. Look, I don't know much about young Ric Flair. I only know older Ric Flair, so it didn't ruin it for me at all. But I hear that was really bad compared to how he actually acted back in the day. But you know how, like, you know, like Ric Flair from the late eighties. Jared met his wife at a glory hole. He says that's. Well, that's something. I mean, at least you good, have honesty. That's a if great. You have honesty. You got nothing. That's a great Thanksgiving topic at the dinner table. Hey, <laughs> I remember that one time I was cruising around the glory hole and I spotted a vagina. Wow, that felt good. And I yeah. thought it was a butthole. I was scared, and then I saw that lady, and I'm like, in love. You know, Your those vagina two holes, is those two holes at the top of the apple pie over there got me thinking about the time that I met my wife. Her Put vagina right in one. was just so warm and welcoming and wide, wide open yeah. for everybody. Yeah, that such a that old mixed up stuffing over there actually reminds me of her vagina. And also the the the, oh. the floppy ham over there it definitely reminds <laughs> me of her curtains. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, fuck. Michael, thank you, buddy. Aquaman 2 is expected to outgross Black Adam. 
Well, don't be racist. Nobody That's likes a that. Huge racial. This is thing. a public like, show. Oh my God. I mean, I thought we were all having fun, and then Michael's yeah. going to come in and drop a race bomb like that. Unnecessary, Mike. No, Michael's Un a fucking necessary. I know, but I don't want to. People might not know. Uh, like Michael's a great guy. <laughs> I don't want to look at it like, oh, fuck that guy. No, you might be right. Uh, Black Adam. I liked Black Adam for what it was. It wasn't a great spec. I, I like his name's for... not Mel. Huh? Sure, it's, sure it's Michael. Sure, it's not Mel. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Oh. He didn't have anything against the, the black people. It was the Jewish. Jewish he did use the N word quite a did bit. He? Yeah. No, 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 the no, voice no, no, no. He was drunk. He said a nightcap. I need a nightcap. <laughs> oh, not, no. Uh, it says, uh, nays gotta let the naysayers know. Let a naysayer know. I let a naysayer know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, uh, yeah. Mean. I would imagine. Uh, well, you know, it's weird. I didn't <laughs> think Aquaman 2 would outperform Black Adam because Black Adam didn't have any controversy around it necessarily at all. I mean, so it's actually interesting. But if it does, it does. I mean, that's the, you know, Goodbye, Zack Snyder uh, universe forever. So I, I hope it goes out of the bank. I do. I, I hope that there's some kind of like nod to Zack Snyder's universe, but there won't be. But anyway. Yeah, I, I, I'm not going to ever watch that movie in my whole life. I can tell you that. Shape in the Shadows. Hey, hey, Mike and Jay and the Wham Fam. Let's have a great time as Mike thinks about us in our birthday suits. Love. Yeah, guys, I do. I think about all of you naked. That's actually I have extreme stage fright. So I have to do copious amounts of methamphetamines um mm. cortisol shots and even a couple of uh pepto bismols before i come on shows but i always just think about all of you naked before i do them but just the men because dicks make me feel safe and that's why he's not been able to shop at a kmart or a target in nine years it reminds me of my childhood you know and nothing's nothing makes you feel safer than your childhood adrian says so who won the godfather two good oh, yeah. poll? i forgot about Ooh, that shit fuck we mike that didn't up, save didn't it we? mike didn't save it he was too busy thinking about your all's dongs didn't they fucking save that? And he broke his microphone. Did you break that shit? No, you didn't. Did you really? No, you didn't. Oh, there you go. That's the sound he makes when he comes from a guy in the, <laughs> yes. in the ass. Hang on. My microphone's breaking up now. Uh -oh. I was like, that's why it got the fucking butt. <laughs> oh, there you are. Papa, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, I can, son. It was definitely good, fellas. I remember. The Goodfellas win? No, he's, he's lying. He's lying right to Adrian, who's had his fucking whole life shattered because his car was hit in the Walmart parking lot, and the bastard ran, and then Mike is, like, lying to him. Uh, what? Ridiculous. I did hit a parked car in a garage one time, but I don't want to get myself in trouble. I would not get, get into details trouble. about things right now. I yeah, I don't want to. I would, like, skirt around that quickly. I don't. Quickly, yeah, run don't away from you with child and father. That didn't happen. That was a lie. I didn't do that. I definitely... Definitely didn't do that. Yeah, I was like, yeah, this one oh. time I overran a fucking, like I ran over an old lady collecting cans. What? No, I didn't. That's a lie. Yeah, they've been looking. Oh, see, Mike just fucked his, yeah, there we go. Underwater. <laughs> It'll be fine. Put some, uh, put some rice on that shit. Put some rice on that shit. Brad says off top, a bit off topic, but what is your opinion on the Pirates of the Caribbean? And uh, has Jay like, God damn, get that shrimp out of here. Nobody wants to see that. Speaking of Pirates of the Caribbean, my uh, keyboard is apparently the Black Pearl and has sunk. But uh, OK, so what is your opinion on the Pirates of the Caribbean? And have I played Ghost of Tsushima? You said Tsushima, Tsushima, I, I, <clears throat> but I don't think it's spelled that way. But Tsushima, uh, Tsushima, I've never played it. Um, I know about it. Uh, never played it. Looks amazing. Just I, I got so many games to get to, my bro. I I will never probably get to that. I I, I right now I had to take a break from Cyberpunk, which I'm 75 hours into, so I could play Final Fantasy uh, 7 remake, so that I can get ready for the new game that's coming out February 29th next month. And then I also need to play Final Fantasy 16, which I've not gotten onto. And then. Um, I want I, I want to go back and touch it, Starfield, but I know people are saying it's it's asshole garbage juice, so I don't know. But as far as the opinion of Pirates of the Caribbean, I think they're great. Um, I think the first two are magnifical. Uh, I'm not really a fan after that. I feel like it got a bit too goofy and the plot kind of got lost. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the first one's classic for a reason. There was, you know, Jack Sparrow, the character of Jack Sparrow was, is, um, monumental johnny depp did such a great job with that role and uh it, like it really was i i remember watching pirates of the caribbean the first one and my dad had uh it had already been out for a while but my, my dad had got the dvds of uh pirates of the caribbean one and two and i was so excited at the end of the first one i'm like this is so good that i was happy to see the second one 
but after that, I kind of got burned out on him. Can and you I don't me? know what it, I don't know what it was. I mean, Jack Sparrow is still a great character, and Pirates of the Caribbean is still a great franchise. But I like it, like I don't know why it just got goofy. Like I, I you know what I mean? Like it just like I know it was meant for like kind of over the top anyway, but it just got way too into that uh, for me to keep enjoying it. But I think the first two are amazing. Yeah, I, I like Pirates of the Caribbean. I bet you do, you butt pirate. I know. I love. Oh, I love. Oh, you can't hear. Me. Oh, you can I love hear me. plugging those butts. Oh, good. And, and plugging those leaks. Uh, oh, but God. also, uh, without Johnny Depp, the franchise is dead. That's it. The franchise is dead without Johnny Depp. Well, I think it should be cast by Amber Heard. I think that'd be a pretty. Yeah, good she's thing. great because she's innocent. Yeah, I would like to see that. She's I'd great. like to see that. What an innocent lady she was. Oh, what do you got? Against, what do you got against Amber Heard? I don't like people that poop in beds. Oh, so 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 what? Cat Williams tell you that she pooped in a bed? Yeah, Cat Williams said it. And Cat Williams will you put his little dick in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you will, and I'll suck it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> said, "Stop, dudes! I bought blink tickets today. Yes, for the show at Rupp, a fucking wow. arena. Okay, for man. Myself for blowing it in the Patreon Fantasy Championship. Hey, dude, that better be Ooh, a good man. show because I'm gonna be at that fucking show. It better be a great fucking show, camera. Come on, we'll meet up in the bathroom and touch each other's junk." That's exactly well, all the small bathroom. things come on because it'll be relatable, I'll you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you the coordinates. Uh yeah, no, dude. I can't wait for that fucking that's gonna uh, August, not till August. We got till August. We have a long time to wait. Yeah, but, well, uh, you know what? Uh it don't matter because I get to go see Creed. <laughs> the next fucking day. How crazy is that, dude? Well, I, I invited Mike uh and his wife, but they were like, Oh no, dude, it's like literally the next day. But I mean, it's like everybody's like sorry about Blink 22 is the first time in Rep Arena or whatever. Is it their first time in Rep Arena? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they never. Yeah, it's before. like, yeah, it's like, yeah. Well, I get to go see fucking Creed, dude. <laughs> With arms wide open. I, I, I'm excited, dude. I, I, I uh, it's not just Creed. It's uh, I, I don't really give a shit about Finger Eleven, but it's uh, it's also a Three Doors Down. I caught a Finger Eleven drumstick one time. Still yeah. have it. No, did I you don't. finger but eleven did. times in your butt? Uh, yeah. But no, I, also Three Doors Down is playing with them, which is cool. how do you think I got the drumstick? <laughs> How'd you get it out? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah dude three doors down is gonna play which i i'm not like usually for the show like april really wanted to go see uh the, the show but i was like yeah it's kind of cool i mean i mean i, I you know they're classic. i saw people. them twice before they got political and they were really good but now they're creed no uh three doors down oh um i saw them twice they're they're this is when they were young they were really fucking good this is one of my first uh like small concert like floor shows was three doors i down. just want to see some fat guy in diapers running around goes if i go crazy then you'll still call me for mine. dude he looks he actually looks good he looks just like fucking cody do 100 percent. like he's still dead does. on i know Dude, that was the first show I ever saw. I was all nervous. Uh, I was with my girlfriend. The 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 con like the the stage was all dark and black. All, and there's one little light. His <laughs> the lead singer three doors down's face goes. <sighs> it did pops like, into the light and he's like, oh. and I was like, what he, the fuck? Did he do the Brandon Lee thing from the crow where he's like, Ugh. and he's like letting it kind of spread and like. <laughs> kinda, <laughs> I was like, what, what he did? What an edge lord! Fucking edge. This is like bro. twenty fucking years ago. Yeah. Um. I can't wait, Cameron. I'm psyched for you too, buddy. Joshua says, had my 40th birthday yesterday. Feeling the pain. Get ready. Hey, happy fucking birthday, buddy. Hey, happy birthday, man. And yeah, I know it's coming. Still I know. I can this. feel it in my hips and I can feel it in my ankles and I can feel it in my face. I don't like it at all. And by the way, what, what stalks me in the dreams looking at 40 years old is your profile picture. I see that devil every day. Almost time for you to come home. <laughs> no! I got to go pee. Okay. okay. All right uh jay's gotta go be happy fucking birthday josh that is a good man i've met that man he is a good person he's a handsome person and you're gonna have the best fucking the 40s are gonna be better than your 20s dude i can feel it in my ganjas and you know what let's in, let's introduce josh's birthday with a classic song from a man called steven seagal because i saw someone put this in the chat they said me want the punani and um that's what they said. There was a comment in the chat that said, me want the Punani. Okay? Someone asked for the Punani, and this is what they get. They get Steven Seagal, and this is for Josh for his 40th birthday because he's a good man. Listen closely. Oh, wait. Hold on. I got to make sure I uh, share it right. Um, so you can hear the audio. Okay. This is uh, Steven Seagal. Here we go. What you really want all night? No one's a banana, sip a lemonade. Me want the body, him want the banana. I'm in the way nice. Sweet, 
No one's a Fernandez, see for me, my name. No one's a Fernandez, see for me, my name. No one's a Fernandez, see for me, my name. Fernandez, see for me, my name. I want to go there and want to go on it. I mean, no way, nice. So. That's a real thing that exists in the world. Yep. Yep. That exists. That's a, that's a thing that exists in the fucking world. <laughs> they want to put nani. Steve Sugar wants to put nani. <laughs> I'm above the law. <laughs> Beep, pop, boop. Thoughts on Cruz joining WB? DC projects, maybe. Dude, it's crazy because Paramount's going to shit. And that is the biggest fucking number one thing that you know for a fact uh, Paramount's done. They're dunsies. There was a rumor that they were going to sell to WB with David Zasloff or they were a conglomerate or some shit like that. The lady who runs the things running into money problems. Tom Cruise jumped ship, literally. And then, uh, but the, here's the thing. People forget this. I think I see a lot of people with a lot of confusion about it. It's not exclusive. So he's still going to be able to do Mission Impossible movies. He's still going to be able to do what he wants, but he's going to have that deal with Warner Brothers. I think it's cool, man. Um, I made a joke on Twitter that's like Steven Seagal versus Freddy Krueger. When is that going to happen? And someone's like, what about or Steven Seagal? Tom Cruise. What about Tom Cruise as Freddy Krueger? Dun, 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 Tom Cruise as Freddy Krueger is the scariest fucking thing I can imagine in my bunk late at night. Uh, that's what I think. What do you think, Jay? Vicky had to go pee pee. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, Warner Brothers or, or Tom Cruise signed uh, a deal with Warner Brothers to do uh, a bunch of movies with Warner Brothers. What do you think about Tom Cruise as Freddy Krueger? I mean, he's right. definitely got the creepy smile and the Scientology yes. background to really make it work. Yes. Uh, as far as what he do it, no. He's like, I got to do my own stunts. That means I got to slash the bitch for real. Okay, God, it's gonna be real. Was, yeah, he's he's already got enough troubles. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, as far as him joining the WB, I mean, yeah, it's kind of cool, I guess. I don't know. I like Tom Cruise as an actor. I think he's one of the best actors in the world. But he's, uh, yeah, he's uh, his uh, his real life shit's kind of fucked. I mean, it's crazy as shit. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. I bet Cat Williams probably has the true story. Mike keeps on like digging it like a fucking like he likes to take that uh, that uh, that uh, <laughs> that shank and keep on going to your your kidney with it. <laughs> I don't know why I'm feeling sadistic. I'm a sad. He's a sadist. Uh, Watch your back. Never. Tim C is a sadist, but we're thankful for it because that means that he loves us because you're too good to us, brother. Hey, we thank really you, appreciate man. That. Appreciate you, Tim. Uh, he said, hey, saw a preview pic of Samara Weaving from Azrael, darker hair, covered in blood, totally hot, as she wasn't ready or not. As you uh, Covered in blood, of course. I'm a married mm -hmm. man. I don't look at other women, just men. Uh, a hot movie of hers. Or, or, sorry, a movie of hers buried under COVID was a moment of clarity. Good thriller with amazing nudity from mm -hmm. her. She is not. Samara Weaving does not. Get uh, naked. Tell me more, Tim. So, where do we see Jamie Lee's breasts? I need to see Jamie Lee's breasts. She didn't go nude. <laughs> there was like trading places in 82. Um, good thriller, amazing nudity from her. Sorry for the perviness, but people need to watch. No, you're, you're that's welcome need to here. see it. That's welcome here, Tim. You're you're allowed to speak. This is a this is a zone of truth. It's fine. No one judges no one around here. What channel's it on? What station can I stream this from? This uh personally this artistic I think film. It's, I think it's disgusting you would bring that mindset here, Tim. And I'm gonna need you to private message us the channel so that I can make sure nobody else here sees it. So I can complain on the hotline of whatever channel that nudeness is on and stop the children from seeing it. That tampon is leaking. Get out of here. Yeah. Hey, That's Tim, what I'm gonna you, do. You can be, private PM me on my on my MySpace. No, send it to me so I can complain. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm just gonna complain about it. No, I didn't um, know about that. I had no idea. Uh, a moment of clarity. I didn't even know what that. No. You think it's one of those things that a lot of actresses do that? You think they probably just show her face and there's a body double? It's not actually Samara Weaving. No, she would never do that. She's didn't, too pure. Did, no, she, <laughs> yeah, I think Samara Weaving would do it. 100%. You don't, you don't know her. Yeah, I do. She's I not the lead singer. Just because you met the lead singer Jimmy Eat World, you think you know Samara Weaving now. Apparently, he's yep. everyone's director. And I saw I saw Doug Bradley with my own eyes. <laughs> it's a big deal. Big moment. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, we love you, Tim. You're the fucking Thank best, you, Tim. dude. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll so definitely much. look at it. Uh, you guys, moment of clarity. There you go. Yeah, we'll look at your dick. Uh, hey, we are at 8. That was at 8.19 p.m. from Tim Tim. Don't Tim Tim. And I got to go pee pee.
and maybe clean this pop off my chest. Clean the pee off the toilet first. Oh, I'm gonna lick it. All. Oh no, I'm not. That's <laughs> your tongue. Yeah. Are you doing? Are you doing it for the gram? Are you doing it for? Gram? To, yeah, I'm trying to <laughs> doing it for the talk. The old talk talk. The old uh, TikTok. Eight, eight nine. Okay, that was okay. I got it. All right. Be right back. Okay, I'll see you soon. I'll see you real soon. The law just don't go around here, loud dog. Uh, let's see. Uh, Aaron Roman said, "Hey, what's up, Mike and Jay? How are you guys doing? Well, thank you." Um, Twenty Joy are coming up. Really good movies. I'm excited for Godzilla Kong, the new Empire, and Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire. Hope those movies are good. Yeah. Um, Godzilla Kong, look at like I I, I want to see it. I hope there's not like a lot of uh, talky talky. No more talky. I don't want a lot of like you know. Um, character to, i just i don't want to like a, like spend like three hours discussing about the potential for catastrophic monsters coming you know and fight you know i don't want that i just want them to get into the the the, the actual beef of the movie which is godzilla and kong fighting or not fighting each other but fighting the new threats i want to see that shit but yeah i'm excited and ghostbusters frozen empire we did the the trailer reaction for it and like i man I, of course, I'm excited for a new Ghostbusters movie, and like anything better than 2016 is is fine. Anything's better than 2016's Ghostbusters, but uh, like, I don't know, man. It just there's it just feels like it's targeted for like a super young audience, and I know like it may not like I get it. It's 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 a kids show essentially. I understand, but I don't know. I'm gonna hold out hope. I th I hope it's good, um, but I'm I, you know what? It's gonna be good, Aaron. We're both in this together. It's going to be good. They're going to be great movies. Okay. Stop being such a doubter, you asshole. I know. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, C G C J G three one three. What the fuck kind of malware? Malware? Malware name is that? Holy fuck! Did you infect my computer? It sounds like that. It's, it's like, hey, your computer's been infected by C J G three one three. Deposit one hundred and fifty five dollars and thirty seven cents to get your computer unlocked. Anyway, how much we got to pay for a Loomis and Michael watch along of Blood and Honey too? Oh my God, dude, fuck you! <laughs> uh, also, Lions to the Super Bowl. Happy New Year's, boy. Happy New Year, man. Uh, we've never done. I don't think we've ever done a Loomis Myers watch along for anything. Uh, but especially that movie apparently sucks. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I've just gone off the reviews and what Mike's like. Apparently, it was bad. I don't Blood and Honey one. I don't know. Um, but I. <laughs> Who knows what the future may bring there, good sir. But uh, Lions, they said, well, yeah, I mean, they, uh, they, when they, they haven't won one, right? So, yeah, if they win, cool, cool, cool. No problems with that. So, yeah, go Lions. Get it. Go, Leon. Uh, Mr. Clumps, you heard of the new Slasher Founders Day coming out. Uh, it's about Election Day. Looks as bloody as Thanksgiving and similar. Comes out on January 19th. I haven't heard about it. Um, but I haven't seen uh, Thanksgiving. So, I don't know. But yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, like listen, this year is going to be fucking nuts uh, for elections. So I am not surprised someone capitalizing on making a movie uh, about some crazy ass election day, you know, craziness because it's going to be wild. But no, I haven't heard about it. I I'll ask Mike though. Maybe he's heard about a new slasher, Founders Day. Great name though, uh, Founders Day. But thank you, Mister Clumps. Nice to see you. That you're out on parole. It's really nice to see you. Let's keep going down here, shall we? Uh, Wyatt Atley says, I saw Night Swim. Uh, that might be the last Blumhouse film for a minute. That was a rough film. Was it shitty? It sounds like shitty. <laughs> it sounds bad. I'm not going to lie. And, like, I like obviously you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, thank God, because otherwise I wouldn't be married. But, yeah, Night Swim, that just sounds like some cheap-ass, like, 70s throwaway garbage-ass title. Night Swim, where everyone is a victim. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, my God, my voice got, like... Double kill, triple kill, overkill. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, Night Swim. Sorry, man. Sorry that you had to endure. But you're here and you got through it and you got hair on your chest now because you're a man and you got through it. Good for you. But I'm, I'm not going to watch you because I could believe you. I don't. I Blumhouse lost my respect uh, a while ago. Uh, with Halloween ends, I... No way. Uh, keep it on cruising. Keep it on cruise. Michael says... <laughs> No, Michael, I was joking. He says, racist? I watch Oprah Winfrey every day. <laughs> yeah, dude, I know. Like, we were joking about it anyway, but for real, stop being racist. <laughs> I have a black friend too, Michael. 
Doesn't change the facts, though. I'm kidding. Well, we know that, Michael. I mean, obviously, if you watch Oprah Winfrey in The View, you're not racist at all. <laughs> no, it, Michael's a good man. Uh, Jacob says, Sup, y'all? You know what? Jacob, uh, appreciate you, man. Uh, love you too. I'm gonna let Mike answer that because it's directed towards his asshole, so that's for show. Uh, what the fuck? Caliburus TV with a cool ass pick that looks scary. So. Okay, so that's my question too. Of course it is, because it has a weird. Uh, <clears throat> JK says, still waiting for Jay to sing "Nasty Girl" by Band Me Six. <laughs> JK, I will. I don't. I keep forgetting. I will sing it though. I swear to God, I'll sing. I don't give a shit. I have no shame, but I will sing it. Okay, I promise. Adrian Yabara says, "I'm kind of hyped about this Ted prequel TV series. Oh, are they doing that show? That's that'd be cool. Where they uh, like? Okay, but where are they putting it? Is it going to be on HBO Max? Is it going to be like? It's not going to be like an actual like. It's not going to be like A and E or something, right? Because it's not going to be good if it, they they got to be like, you know, they got to go the disgust level with Ted for it to be good. You know, just like vulgar and stuff. But yeah, it's cool. Uh, Colton says, uh, "Thank you, man." Says. Um, we get two Friday the 13th this year. Crystal Lake trailer? Yeah, I know. Where the fuck is that at, you assholes? Give us that. Give Fill my mouth up with that Crystal Lake water, sir. I don't know. Maybe it's coming in the next couple of months. We'll see. I mean, I'm still waiting on fucking New Game Plus for Spider-Man 2. I know they got hacked, but get over it. I know. I know I'm kidding. I understand. Uh, okay, we're all caught up. I got to make sure I tag. Uh, so, uh, 8.58 and... Uh, 8.56. Okay. Huh. Hey, you just got back in time, you goddamn hemorrhoid. Uh, yeah. uh, there's two questions specifically directed at you. Uh, um, uh, at 8.56 for Jacob, and then at uh, 8.58 for Calaveras TV. I'm, I don't know. 8.56. That's my favorite time. I don't know if you guys know that. It's my second favorite time. Um, Jacob! He's a good man. I like his face in the way his music sounds. Mike, what do you think about the new Green Day and Alkaline Trio singles? Wasn't too crazy about Green Day's new song, but I thought Bad Time and Versions of You by Alkaline Trio were sick. Love you both. Dude, same. Same. Uh, One-Eyed Bastard from Green Day. Uh, my eight-year-old, uh, seven-year-old loves that. She's almost eight. Um, loves that song. And I had to be like, okay. She's like, can we listen to One-Eyed Bastard? I'm like, you can't say Bastard. Stop saying that song. Don't show this to your friends. She loves it. But that <clears> opening <throat> riff... It's way too much that pink song that -na 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 totally ruined the song for me. Can't get into it uh, at all. But Alkaline Trio's new song, fucking love it. I love all three songs they've put out so far. That album's gonna be so fucking good. They did it. Uh, Matt uh, Skiba did a great interview, Jacob, with Tuna on Toast. It's like an hour and a half long interview with just Matt Skiba talking about his time and Blink and everything. You gotta check that out. Dude. It's fucking that about awesome. Courtney I love. love too, is that about fucking Courtney Love, Tuna on Toast. Tuna. <laughs> Ew. on the rice Poopy yeah the yeah rice. yeah I, uh, jacob i mean for real man i love the way that he strums that guitar and his hair spiky dookie was great <laughs> <laughs> I, I but i'll say this dilemma green day song dilemma their second single the best green day song they put out in 10 years i fucking adore that song dude it's so good uh calaveras seven Mike, if you could form a punk band with only slashers, who would be drummer, guitar, bass, and vocalist? Oh my goodness gracious, that is a question. Vocalist, you'd have to go with obviously Freddy Krueger. Uh, as the slash, nope, no, nope, I changed my mind. Ghostface, Ghostface is going to be the vocalist of the band. The drummer is going to be Jason because he would just pound the fuck out of those drums. The guitar player would be uh, Michael Myers because he would have that West Borland thing going about him, just fucking standing up there looking creepy as shit and doing his thing. And then the uh, bass player would be um, Jeepers Creepers guy. Um, yeah, but he, you did, he you didn't can, do it. You, oh, it was uh, now, I was going to say it would be it would change the punk band. But what if you made it like like Linkin Park and then you had that guy that was techno guy and he was like doing all yeah. the mixing and it would be like Pinhead and he would be like, I like you're it. suffering, 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 suffering. We'll be legend <laughs> in hell, 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 yeah. hell, hell. <laughs> Pinhead would be the keyboard guy. He'd be on synth. Your soul, 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 soul is mine. <laughs> Blessed are they who come to my soul, 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 soul. Uh, that's a great suck, 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 suck. I was all oh, caught up. Uh, yeah, so I think up? we're at um, uh, 907 with Adrian. Adrian Yabara says thoughts on new star wars theater release which is titled the mandalorian and grogu wish it was more of a story reset than this but still will watch and it's going to be directed by john favreau 
Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to watch it, but The Mandalorian and Grogu, it's like, holy shit. It's like, why don't you just call it fucking Star Wars 15? It's not really that much of a stretch for a great title. But yeah, you're right. Like, if, as far as a reset goes, I'm with you. I think that they, at this point, like, it, it's such a fucking train wreck. And that new Ray movie that's going to come out, it's going to be even worse. That's literally just rubbing salt in the wounds and pissing in your mouth and saying, drink it. They might as well just say it never fucking happened and start over. But they're not going to do that. So we are left with what we got. I'll be excited to go see an actual theatrical movie that's going to be a good Star Wars movie because I think it's going to be a good Star Wars movie, which is, you can't say that anymore. Fucking mind blown, right? About a Star Wars that in, in a theater, it's going to be a good movie. It's rare as fuck. It's so, wild to say that too. I think the it's only good time. movie that came out of the, the fucking Kathleen Kennedy goddamn dog shit ass company was uh, Rogue One. <clears throat> and a couple of the, the other, like, uh, yeah, Rogue One. I think Rogue One. Solo wasn't bad. It was boring, but it wasn't bad. But nobody watched it. I couldn't it. even watch it. Yeah. I couldn't even watch that shit. Like, mm. a solo movie without fucking Harrison Ford in it? Get out of here. That shit was dumb. Well, like, his 98-year-old ass was, like, getting fucking blood transfusions like the mummy that he is. Like, they couldn't get him on set. They had to wait for Indiana Jones. <laughs> Dude, so speaking of which, we haven't talked about this yet. Did you see the fucking Golden Globes clips? Yes. I don't want to watch Holy those Holy fuck. That was bad. It Joe was Clay? bad. Oh, dear God. It was, it was some of the cringiest... It, like... I haven't had that much cringe since I asked a girl on a date when I was like 16. <laughs> you know what the worst thing he did, dude? The worst thing he did, like, it's okay if you go on stage and bomb, right? Yeah, like, that's he, all right. Like, it fine. was a learning experience. Yeah, but when he fucking threw his writers under the bus, when he got embarrassed that nobody was laughing, and he was like, I only wrote some of these jokes, and those are the ones you guys are laughing at. What kind of a cunt goes in there and is like, uh, works with the writing room, okays the script, goes on stage, and then when he can't sell the material, blames the writers for it. What a fucking never-ending douchebag. Well, it? yeah, but the jokes were bad anyway. But no, but like, I, like even if they were, I think they're always bad, unless it's Gervais. That 20 Gervais, 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 I mean, they're not all bad. Chris Rock has also done great jokes. Like, no, it's yeah. not that the guy, yeah, he couldn't, his delivery line was dog shit, but the jokes were badly written. I mean, and that's what happens when you can't write your own material. You suck. Like, and I mean, good for, you know, like, listen, I would even not even say anything about the guy. He was like, yeah, you had a bad fucking night. Everybody has those. If he had <clears> that, <throat> the, the dip shit that he did. Yeah. That made it 10 times worse. Yeah. He did yeah. And, I, and like, you know, I, he, he, his delivery was shit. Like he did not believe in the lines. His I never thought he was ass. Anywhere. Like when he did the Taylor, I don't think any of his jokes were offensive. Like people are trying to act like he was super offensive. That wasn't the problem. Mm -hmm. He just made standard ass jokes. But like he, when he did the Taylor Swift joke, he was like, uh, they, they, sh at least the uh, Golden Globe show Taylor Swift less. He was like, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Immediately. Sorry. Yeah. And she like, commit to your him. shit. Just yeah. say it and commit to it. Don't apologize. Terrible. And that Iggy oh. ho, y'all going to see me really blow. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking, like go out with Eminem shit. Like, do Harrison Ford's face? Else, <laughs> else, else but it. putting cotton to these cottons as soft as cotton milk, whatever the fuck it was. Yeah, like um, they do that shit. But at the end of the day, like I don't know, man. And if it's bombing, fucking try to mix it up in the middle and, and, and like just start ad libbing some shit. I don't yeah. know. Like make somebody make fun don't of somebody. Don't blame the writers, man. That's weak ass shit. That was weak. That's oh, it's we. I, to me, in my opinion, I think it's weak ass shit that any kind of comedian that gets the stage of a Golden Globe that can't write their own fucking jokes. That's the joke. Yeah. Like, you, why are you there? Ten days ago, dude. I could write a fucking Golden Globes monologue in ten days. I don't know how good it's gonna be, but I could do it. Like, that's I, not, I, I have way fun. more. I just have more, and I understand why some comedian. Well, I don't. I have way more respect for any fucking like comedian that gets up there and like writes their own material and like goes through the motions. And they 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 tweak it and they get it better and better and better. I have way more respect for those guys. So those guys are the like that's like a band that has to go up on stage and, and get like beer cans thrown at them and shit and booed yeah. until they actually fine tune their shit and get it together. Like Kiss, like when Kiss started, they fucking sucked, dude. And they knew they did, and they kept yeah. on working that shit. And they had a great they had a great uh, uh 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 what do you call it um stage presence, and they also had a great like uh the makeup thing that was their thing. But they just, they couldn't fucking sing and they couldn't play their instruments. They fine tuned that shit, but they kept at it. No, I have like, way more respect for people to get like goddamn tomatoes and, and cabbage and like carrots thrown in their asshole when they bomb on stage versus someone's like, well, my writers didn't do a good job. Fuck yeah. you. That was embarrassing. He looked like he was going to cry too. That was so shameful. Like that was awful. Um, yeah, that was terrible, man. Uh, and Harrison Ford's face was hilarious though, dude. If you watch Harrison Ford at the bottom, he goes, oh. <laughs> He's fucking, he goes, oh, God. Like, the pure Harrison Ford face. It was awesome. Uh, but if you guys want to see a great Golden Globes monologue, 
Ricky Gervais 2020 when yes. he went out and called him called a bunch of people pedophiles to their fucking faces. Well, like, he did that twice. was the ballsiest thing I've ever seen in my fucking well, life. Well, the, the best thing about him was the more drunk he got, the more truer he got. And that's why yeah. it was funny. And 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 the fact that everybody got uncomfortable, that's that's why it was funny. Like, Cause he's like, you got you elitist motherfuckers. Do you think anybody gives a shit when you come on stage and accept your little golden award and try to tell people, poor people, how to live? You fucking bubble-headed morons. You're <laughs> fucking like he didn't. He was say, like, I'm, I'm if you win an award tonight, come up here, thank your God, and get the fuck off the stage. Yeah, like because no, you don't know what real life is like for real uh, people. So don't pretend. And, and, yeah, to. and he's not. And people are like, oh, like, he's conservative. No, he didn't. He's not even conservative. He just was literally telling this elitist bullshit crowd, don't come up here, like. And I love Robert De Niro, dude, but just like when that fucking thing happened with that goddamn movie and he wants to go and rail on Trump, fuck you, dude. Just take your goddamn thing and go off the stage. Shut up. Your diapers are filling up as we speak, and you're a legend. But let's be real. I don't I mean, I would take Donald Trump. 50... I, I would take I would take Robert De Niro over Donald Trump seven days a week. I, no, I don't but... want to hear a fucking celebrity blessed by fucking money and all sorts of shit sitting there telling me how I should vote. Go fuck yourself and go back to your walker. Shut in general, up. they should stay out of it. Yeah, in general. Yeah. Uh, and Kevin Sorbo as well. <laughs> yeah, I no, it's any celebrity. I, oh, like, if you be yeah. a more you're you're a flat footed moron to believe any celebrity. Like if that's how you literally live your life, holy shit, dude! Put the yeah. crack pipe down. Make love to your wife or girlfriend. Go outside and smell the fucking oxygen that's breathing into your lungs and get the fuck off the internet. If your yeah. fucking whole life is ruled by what celebrities tell you to do on Twitter, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I do get Robert De Niro though, because it's like my dad. Like you'd be like, "Hey, Dad, uh, you having some uh, Wendy's for breakfast?" He's like, "Yeah, but that fucking Donald." Trump. <laughs> like they get upset. Like it, uh, it's I just think they didn't him. want to get embroiled um, in any kind of controversy with politics. They're like, "Yeah, we don't want to do that this year." Yeah, like I love Joaquin Phoenix, but he gets up there and talks about how we should save the the soy milk cows for twenty minutes. I'm like, dude, come I on, think you're Joaquin Phoenix. Thinks if you're more that worried cow. about it, go fucking pay to fix it. You yeah. got enough money. Shut well, up. I think. Um, Phoenix forgets that he. I think he thinks he's a soy milk cow. Like he's out there. Like you know, <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah, uh, I Ricky Gervais was the man in 2020. Oh, that was fucking awesome. Yeah. Crimson Black, Terminator Two is my favorite 1991 movie. Oh. Also, I hope you're doing well. We love you. Love you too, man. Crimson. Pro- man. You, it might be on our top ten. I don't know if it's gonna make the cut. Yeah, dude. Like I don't it, know. Like, I don't know, man. I think my number one might just be "Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead." I Could be. Fucking... No, I'm kidding. Uh, it's not, I don't know what my number one. I can't. I can't. Stop going to Barnes and Nobles and reading the last page of the book there, Crimson. <laughs> trying to get something out of me. Lee the Machine Bowers. By the way, we're about to do our top 10 of 1991. I promise. Loomis, I also love me some Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons. Sherry, Sherry, Baby Kill. Michael, LOL. Good song. You know what I really love? Unhinged people coming on here and giving goddamn donations and say, oh, I love this song about murder and death. You know what I would love? You'd be locked in a room 24-7, pat it. And then given injections of shut the fuck up. Now shut the fuck up and stop commenting such nonsense. Even though I do love Frankie Valley. <laughs> Mr. Clumps, Mike, you heard of the new slasher Founders Day coming out. It's about election day. Oh shit. Sorry, Mr. Clumps. I, I totally I'm sorry, what? man. He asked this question. I oh, fuck, dude. I'm I feel bad. You didn't have to do that again. God damn it, Jay. God I'm damn sorry. it, Jay. Yeah, he, yeah, he's asked shit, Jay. Why don't you suck the fucking chocolate syrup out of my ass? I thought you never asked. Okay. Um, <laughs> ask. Um, it looks as bloody as Thanksgiving and similar comes out January 19th. You know, I saw the still of that and I was like, that looks like a piece of frozen chunk of poopies. But I saw the trailer and it's all in, it's in theaters only. So I'm like, okay, there's some fucking Hagen Dazs ice cream behind this bitch. This thing could be good. I'm excited to see it actually. Definitely going to go see it and review it from the Sorry, Mr. Clumps. I, I didn't mean to take that money from you. You need it for your probation officer. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Christian James, good man. We met him too. Ah, a fellow Chucker, eh? Mike, uh, if we get a Browns Packers Super Bowl, can we meet up and take our shirts off? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. I mean, we can do that anyway, but the chances of the Browns and the Packers both making the Super Bowl is so rare that I'll go one further. I'll meet you and I will finger your ass. Listen, if you guys get a Browns Packers name, so the names are already there. Browns, Packer, Fudge packing it in. Of course they are. If you guys are going to do more than take off your shirts, you're going to roll around in the dirt bad. and like do a goddamn, uh, what's that movie called? Jim John. No. Jim John. Broke back mountain situation story. on the football oh, yeah. field we like. I'll put you in a tent. And I'll roll over and pretend I'm wrestling you, but then I'll be taking your pants off. You're like, what's going on? And I'm like, I already got the back. Now I'm the dominant one. Oh, wait, I, wrestle I, I, around I, the tent. 
I want you to know what? Uh, Brokeback Mountain's awesome movie. It really is it's good. good. Ang Lee movie, was man. great, man. I've seen that movie like five times, and only once that I didn't jack off to it. So, yeah, I watched that. I actually caught his cum. <laughs> How's that pale ale? <laughs> Love you, Christian. Christopher Sampson flopping to the moon like that bitch Al Scramps said, hey, bros, Kentucky needs an NHL franchise. What mm. happened to Clive Owen? He'd be a great evil CEO or president or head of NASA. Dude, Clive Owen rocks the shit. Shoot I love Clive Owen. Fucking underrated yeah, shit. I don't know. That's that's actually an interesting question. I, I don't know if he just like backed off of like mainstream Hollywood and he just does like indie films now. Like maybe that's what happened. I don't know. It could be. But yeah, Clive, I, you know, that's another guy I've, I've thought about before as playing like a Loomis. Clive Owen. I think Clive Owen would do a really, really good Ooh, job as a Loomis. Saucy. Yeah, I think so. But as far as um, uh, and, and we need, do we need all sorts of things we need like a fucking nba team we need an nfl team we need like fucking better governors <laughs> we need better fucking uh, like, hey, i like this rates. year all right shut the fuck yeah, up oh no you're talking you about mcconnell no i'm talking about governor but i but either way yeah we need a lot of good governor, things going on here in the state the governor for sure you're right fucking Bashir rocks the shit dude that guy's fucking awesome he's a sweetheart don't you ever say another con word about andy Bashir. listen mike's racist so i understand he's white and you don't want him to be we never had a black governor you didn't like that guy did you <laughs> No, but no, I will say, vote for uh, me yeah. or you racist? <laughs> yeah, because if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Who said that, like, Joe Biden? Said. Kentucky. No, I know. Um, uh, but no, as far as the NHL, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't. I've never got into hockey, so I I wouldn't know anything about it. Even if we had it, like, you know, it would be if we actually did have an NHL league, maybe I would because that'd be the only national team that we would have. Yeah, we, we had so Chris, we had fucking uh, the Kentucky legends. thoroughbreds. Oh, the thoroughbreds. No, the yeah. legends are still around. Uh, but like the Kentucky Thoroughbreds, dude, and I remember going to those games as a kid, and that shit was fun as fuck because you can get good seats, you can get like five rows behind the ice, and I guess people just stopped going to the games. But you're right, dude. An NHL team in Kentucky would fucking rip. I would get into hockey. I would start watching hockey. That's what I'm saying. If we had any 100%. national team, even if it was like, and I don't even watch baseball. If it was MLB, I'd watch that shit. Yeah, because I mean, I follow, I, I follow the, the, the whatever team it was, whatever national sport. That'd be badass. And then you have Andy Bashir throw out the first first pitch. God damn, yeah, that'd be so hot. Uh, but no, yeah, I, I, you imagine Mitch McConnell throwing out the first pitch and like, all right, and now Mitch McConnell, he'd go. Yeah, <laughs> he'd fucking do the blue steel and he would last. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I love, would come up and move his arm, and be like, <laughs> what would be funny if he threw it? He was like, ah, oh! it was like a, like a, like it barely went three feet. But no, I, I uh, what was a? We did have a we did have a professional basketball team along uh, ABA. Uh, Kentucky Colonels. We did have one, and then when they when they when the ABA folded with the NBA, they were like, "Yeah, Kentucky sucks. We're not taking them." Yeah, uh, I and I don't think the, the thoroughbreds weren't um... thoroughbreds. Yeah, they had braids in their hair. They were doing great. <laughs> the thoroughbred blades. It's a hard thing to say. You fucking cunt. Uh, thoroughbreds. They <laughs> they weren't they weren't they weren't that good. They weren't that good at all. But like, uh, say it three times uh... fast. I dare you. Oh, um, thoroughbreds. Holy shit. Nah, see, I fucking told you. You can't do it. Not even once. What? I said, th up. you said thoroughbreds. Say thoroughbreds three times fast. No, because I don't need do to. Do it. Do it. I don't need to do, prove myself don't think to about you it. Just do it. or to anybody. Do it. it. Rizzuto, why don't you give me a hard one next time? <laughs> uh, but, dude, Clive Owen fucking rips. There's a movie by him called, fuck, I forgot the name of it. It's a casino movie. The Return with Clive of Thoroughbreds. No, it's the Marco <laughs> Becker. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's so funny it's to me. The I, want, I want to make my gamer tag thoroughbreds. Thoroughbreds. I'm glad you said it because I, I at least someone called me on it so I could fix it. Thoroughblades. Oh, Thoroughblades. George Thoreau funny. good. Yeah. And the seven <laughs> tenders. It's going to be J, J Thoroughbred Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you braid my hair? Love you, Chris. You're the best dude. Thanks, Gary man. says, after all these years of watching Die Hard, I've only just noticed they say he's a flat foot as a fellow flat fucking shit. You're going to do this to me right now? They say he's a flat foot as a fellow flat foot. I respect them even more. It hurts just walking sometimes. Dude, no. Oh, yeah. Was... Flat feet suck, dude. No, dude, I have fucking arched ass feet. My feet, I'll be on the treadmill and that shit starts hurting like two minutes in because I got arched feet and the middle hurts. So mm. I wish I was flat footed. Uh, dude, I, I found out. I, I think they said that in Die Hard with the Vengeance. It's like, yes, it's, there's a difference between not not caring and not giving a shit when some dumb flat footed Irishman drops from a window or a Nakatomi Tower. Yeah, I think it was in Die Hard with the Vengeance. They called him a, a flat, a dumb flat footed Irishman. Yeah. <laughs> Go play potatoes. Shut up. 
uh i i watch I, i'm reading this book about action heroes like in the mm -hmm. heyday right now and there's a fucking awesome story dude this is funny as fuck uh bruce willis before he got cast as john mcclain when he was still yeah. doing moonlighting or whatever or the show yeah uh he had a he had like a house out in the hills or whatever and he, he they were like bruce liked the party bruce loved the fucking party so every night at his place there was a giant party going on and the neighbors eventually got sick of it and they called the cops and the cops came out and they said bruce got out of the fucking pool and ran in the house where nothing but his swimming trunks. And they said when the cops were in his living room, he said, hey, who the fuck let you in here without a warrant? And the cops were like, why, why do you keep saying fuck so much? And he was like, fuck you. He's like, this is how I talk. What is yeah, this, cursing class? He was probably John McClane. I mean, he was still in the John McClane before John McClane had been written. Yeah, he didn't. He wasn't even doing it yet, but I could just picture John McClane. He was like, "Fuck you! This is how I talk. I'm from New York." He was like, "What is this courtesy class?" And the cops, when they yeah. when they put his arm behind his his back, they broke his fucking collarbone because it was already broken from a different uh, from a movie or some shit like that. But that was a crazy Bruce Willis story. That book's fucking awesome, by the way. You Why didn't you do something, it. John? Because you beat that too, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that that dude partied. Um, yeah, yeah dude, I've, um, I've seen his music video where he's like a he's at a pool hall. What he did is he did his song. Did you ever see that music video where he, he literally oh, did well, a song? I can't remember the name of the band. It was like the Ramblers or something. Yeah, but like I, that. Like, you can like, look at him. He's like cruising around a fucking pool hall and he's like, he's probably pool sharking and he's drinking some beer and he's like, yeah, he's like, he got his like fucking, he's got his jeans from the 1990s pulled up to his belly button tucked in. Croupier. Thank you. Blu ray what? at it. Croupier. It's a Clive Owen movie you got to watch called Croupier. It's fucking awesome. It's a like a, movie. It sounds like a defunct French restaurant that I don't want to go to. <laughs> Sounds like a croupier. Hey, come to, come to croupier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go on down to croupier. It's a, it's a, a restaurant. It's a, re it's a restaurant <laughs> slash strip club. You're going to love it. <laughs> Get you a fish sandwich down here. Oh, croupier. you're going to love it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ski Bank the Bump God, who I do have to say has my favorite name of all the people on YouTube. Um, it's all fun and games. I don't even do cocaine, but I would do coke with you in a bathroom. He says, it's all fun and games until you get a call from Joe Bover, Miami Dolphover, Jonathan Majover, Blum Hover, Washington Huskover. <laughs> well, you boys, I don't know what you're saying. I think you've done too much bump. You've done too much blow. <laughs> Stop talking, Ski Bank the Bump God. Holy <laughs> shit, dude. I'm I don't you. get it. I get I get the code and I get what you're saying though, but Jesus Christ, dude. Johnny Depp's blow movie was only a movie. Stop. Hey, listen, Washington Huskies, the football team, got fucking no. hosed over. I don't know. I think I've I, never seen a worse officiated game in my fucking life. Well, that's life. why I think he's talking about like it's over. Miami Dolphin over. Jonathan no. Majors over. Blumhouse uh, over. Blumhouse. Oh, oh. Washington Huskers over. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for now. I get it, and it's a good joke. God damn, Mike could never survive on the street. You fucking weak and soft, bitch. Uh, yeah, that's what Cat Williams said about me. Uh, I yeah, I know he did. Know. And he said you got fucking the ass by Diddy. He's got receipts. He's got receipts, and everybody knows we've you not eat seen him, but he has them because he said it, and we believe it. He, you gonna eat him? Why he fuck? Let Diddy fuck you in the ass and take a goddamn picture <laughs> from an aerial photography. <laughs> Mitch, D. Mitch, you and I are gonna fucking fist fight in the Kroger parking lot tonight. I swear to Christ, they yeah, did, did not they dominate that did fucking they game. Yeah, they won. But the thing was, I was I don't even pay attention to this shit. Like, but I was watching that game, and every fucking play, Michigan was fucking holding the shit out of the Washington uh, lineman, and they were not called for it. Washington gets, they're going to tie the game, right? They're down by seven. He mm -hmm. throws like a 40-yard pass. They're about to tie the game, and Michigan gets called, or uh, Washington gets called for a phantom-ass hold. They they showed the replay, no hold whatsoever, and they called it just because they didn't want him to have that play, and then Michigan goes on to win by like two touchdowns or whatever. They got fucking hosed, bro. Mm -hmm. They got fucking hosed. Sounds like Cat Williams' career with Steve Harvey and everybody else stole it from him. Yeah, exactly. Uh, allegedly. Oh uh, yeah, allegedly. I'm not getting sued. I like Cat. I'm not going to court with him. <laughs> dude, by the way, Fine. I will, no touching I, the hair. I will though, say right? one of the funniest things, dude. I swear you want to it's like you want to see something get destroyed and cringe at the same time. It's funny, but it's cringy. And it's like you feel secondhand embarrassment. Uh when he went on um this this radio talk show in 2016, Cat Williams, Wanda uh Wanda Smith. <laughs> I think that's her name or Wanda so Williams. Look at the fun bags on that hose out. <laughs> look good. But um, he went on this talk show to, uh, in Atlanta. And this lady, she's a she was a comedian. Terrible. But she went in on him. And, like, he's elite level comedian. And he didn't fucking take it. And, like, roasted her fucking ass in the waist. Dude, it's, it's the worst I've ever seen out. Cat Williams went on a talk show in the. Oh, now he's your favorite comedian of all time. You've been watching all his videos, huh? 
Why don't you just you, stop you just being jealous? Wait. Why don't you stop being jealous of, of a little you'd be, man? You'd be like, man. oh, I love this guy now. I jerk off to him at night. Yeah, see how, see, how this, see how this turns around? You see how this turns around? <laughs> Are you watching the same thing right now? Uh, but no, I, I, uh, I'm actually my favorite comedian is Richard Pryor. But either way, no, it was just, it was one of the worst, like, uh, hose downs I've ever seen uh, on, a, on an action. And I can't believe they kept it up. The, the fucking lady's husband pulled a gun on him at the comedy club the next fucking night or the next time he saw him. That's how fucking badly he, and she got fired the next week. Well, I heard that uh, uh, a preacher, preacher lady, um, uh, preacher lady's wife, a preacher. Um, there was a lady who worked fast food, and her employees were being mean to her at McDonald's. And her her husband, who was a preacher, came to McDonald's and tried to stick the employee's face in the fucking fry cook in the in the hot oil. Tried to murder someone for making yeah. fun of it. This is a preacher that did this. Yeah, because so what that means is that religion's a lie. You know what? You know what I heard? I heard this guy that used to play for the Green Bay Packers went down. Uh, uh-uh, don't you stole, dare talk he about a bunch of money from a bunch of poor people, and then he acted mm-hmm. like he was really cool. And they were poor. commercials, and he was awesome. And that's what happened. That's what I heard. Mm-hmm. Why are you talking about Tom Brady? Uh, he was, uh, but yeah, you're right. Yeah, it was. It's all religions a lot. <laughs> Brett Favre is a piece of shit, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I love how uh, this is society that we live in anymore, right? You can't even talk. And he, you got to say allegedly. <laughs> like, yeah, you allegedly. can watch a motherfucker gun down all of his neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> you can go outside allegedly. on your fucking porch and watch him yeah. gun down all his neighbors. And the cops say, do you see what happens? Like, yeah, that guy fucking shot all of his fucking neighbors and kids and shit. Allegedly. Show me the tape. <laughs> allegedly. Is your Show body kid wrong? Allegedly. Allegedly, uh, Kyle. And now after Kyle's chat, we are going to do our top 10 of 1991. I swear to fucking Christ, who doesn't exist? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's that's this. What? I went to Brett Favre school. Uh, Kyle says Clive <laughs> Owen and shoot him up is fucking funny. The mom spanking her kid. Then Owen walks over and starts spanking the mom. Dude, shoot him up is so fucking underrated. It's so good. It's so good. Love that fucking movie. Jay's never you know, seen it. He's lying. I, no, I no, I was gonna say it's so weird. I like Clive Owen a lot. I loved him in Sin City. There's a lot of other movies. I, I never got like and people think it's a classic movie, and for some reason I just thought it was boring and I never got it. Children of Men, but people love that movie. I watched and it I, once and I was like, it's all right. It was all right. Yeah. I was like, I I, yeah. I think I bought it and like because I thought it was gonna be kind of like a you know, more of like a psychological thriller. And it was I was like, Yeah, I should have waited for this shit to come on TNT. Or yeah, he didn't feel like uh, I should have waited. It did feel like a TNT special, to be honest with you. It was all right, though. Um, so okay, here we go. I gotta pull up my listicles here. Um, oh, sorry, this is my by the way, 91, uh, 91 picking a top 10, uh, pretty difficult still, but not, I, I feel like 90 was harder for me. 1990 was still a, a bit more difficult. I don't know, I like, I didn't have like, I already knew instantly what my number one was gonna be. I think by, by the time I got to like the sixth to the tenth, it was harder. There was, yeah, dude. There was not a lot of great horror movies in '91. That's for sure. Like, not a oh, lot of yeah, great horror I got, movies. I got a couple on there, but yeah, there's like, there's some. I was like, no way. Yeah, not, well, I think in '91, like they, like they were all dying out. They were all dying out. In the early '90s, I should say. That's why Scream is so important, and it's the best franchise ever because they brought horror back. <laughs> <laughs> Game genie. <laughs> He's using a game genie. It's not fair. He's it's cheating. It's fucking cheating. <laughs> I can prove it. I got the receipts. Like Cat Williams. <laughs> did he? Did that motherfucker say he reads like 3,000 books a day or some Dude, was, psycho shit hey, like no, that? Listen, I said he was genuine on a lot of things, but that was bullshit. He said, <laughs> I think he said that he had read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica by the time he was seven years old or some shit. <laughs> And I'm like, what the fuck are you fuck is going on here, dude? You read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica, A through Z, by the time you were like, and he was like, and, and, he was like, and no fiction, just nonfiction. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, maybe he did. I don't, I don't know his fucking life. Maybe he did pick up a fucking oh. nonfiction book every day and read it. <laughs> Fucker. Did it have, um, did it have pictures and shit? Because I mean, you can read a lot quick. If they only like had five pages and like had pictures, <laughs> you're like, yeah, I read that shit. That's just funny as fuck. I did read that. That made me laugh. It's like he says he's read like 17 books a day since he was like four or some crazy. No, the reason shit why, like I brought, by the way, the reason why I brought up that lady that got roasted on that talk show, dude, he did one of the funniest things because she was talking. He was like, now you better bring your blood pressure down and your cholesterol because you're getting real excited. And she's like, oh, honey, I'm not getting. She's like, you've been to jail. He goes, 19 felonies and never convicted. 
And he's like, and by the way, there's a difference between jail and prison. Oh, yes, there's a difference. And <laughs> she said something about what he was wearing. And he's like, oh, this? And he's like, I guess Versace don't make good clothes anymore because she said his clothes were shit. And he's like, if you want your outfit and all your jewelry, all you got to do is go to the store and get two pack of Newport. And then you could be wearing her same jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> it, was fucking, it was the worst. And I was like, why the fuck? Would you do that? Like, go after a comedian on a talk show. That's the dumbest thing in the world. He had Stacey a- said. Stacy said nobody said he was a fucking messiah. It's just that he was right about some things. I mean, technically, from what it sounds like, he said he was a fucking messiah. I read seventy six books a day, and also I'm Tom Cruise. No, he, no, he, <laughs> he, he didn't say like he 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 just exposed a lot of shit. And I, I mean, yeah, I mean, he didn't. I mean, basically, he was, saying he, was right he was blackballed in Hollywood, and, and these assholes were elitists. And yeah, I mean, that's all he did. Well, so but we. I'm done talking about it. So are we, Jay. We've been blackballed too by the fucking man. Oh my god, look at this racist piece of shit. <laughs> Whoa, hey, fucking racist. You dude. wouldn't call a man with glasses racist. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> what, oh, are you, what are you fucking logic? Are you logic over there <laughs> thinking you have the greatest white rapper of all time? He's not he, even white, Jay. He, he, That's just there logic. you go. There you go. There no, you go again. Logic is white. No, he's not. He's mixed, you fuck. Bullshit he is. Oh, I see his skin. It's as really light, really light, white as ours. He looks like a saltine also, cracker. By the way, while we're at it, I want to see Obama's fucking birth certificate. Where's it at? <laughs> Where's it at? <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, what's your, what's your number? <laughs> what's your my number 10 is Obama's a liar. Where's the birth certificate? That's the sequel. <laughs> No, uh, my number 10 is going to be Ernest Scared Stupid. Dude, or, you are on some Ernest shit. I ranking. love Jim Varney. Shut the fuck up and recognize the great. Is, is there an A in the name or is it just E-R? I, I think I just tell it. There's no, no, it's not Ernest. It's not like, the, it's just Ernest. It's just Ernest, isn't it? Yeah, Scared yeah. Stupid. I think I got to okay. go back and watch these movies. I forget. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, dude, I, I love this movie back in the day. Like it was the last, for me, it was the last good Ernest movie. Like after that, it was all straight to DVD. Nobody gave a shit. Um, but I, I liked it a lot, dude. I, I, I wish they had done more movies like this where he was like put into horror situations. I think that was a really funny, uh, fun. how about a bumper sandwich, booger lips? And he's like, <laughs> Miak, yeah, Miak, <laughs> like he was trying to get milk. <laughs> and then they also had the lady that played uh, Catwoman from the uh, Adam West show, uh, in the movie as well. And I liked her whole uh, relationship and chemistry with Ernest, especially when she was like, and he'll go after the children first. And he's like, but just the kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I loved him. I thought he, I, I, yeah, the movie is corny. It's cheesy, but dude, there's something about that movie that I, I, I watch it pretty regularly, like around the, the, the fall, you know, during fall. Um, it just puts you in that mood. There's something about that. That's so cool. Nineties. It makes you feel good when you watch it. I don't know, man. They don't make them like that anymore. And Jim Varney was such a great character, uh, a great character actor. I, I, it sucks that he's gone. But, yeah, Ernest Scared Stupid is, like, one of the last best Ernest mm -hmm. movies of all time. Well, my number 10 is way more hardcore than yours. Yeah, because it was so small. Uh, it looked great. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a right. big deal. It's way hardcore, and it's fucking my girl. Um, I'm not ashamed. All, all right. right. My girl fucking ruled, dude. I feel, like the, I feel like we're at the Golden Globes. I'm going to give you a Taylor Swift look. <laughs> no, she, dude, she did ask. I know it was really bad. It was really bad. Look what you made me do. Um, no, dude, my girl's fucking awesome. I watched mm -hmm. this movie a billion times growing up, and it always made me cry. You know, a, a sad, sad story is my sister. When my parents used to go be at work and shit, my sister used to watch me. She was a real fucking asshole to me one day, which she would be a lot. And one day I was crying and shit. And I love my girl so fucking much that she knew she was going to be a deep shit. She fucked up. I think this, I think she faked her death. I think we got in a fight and she like, I, I went to my room and I came downstairs and she was laying on the kitchen floor covered in like <laughs> jelly and ketchup and holding yeah. a knife. And she was like dead. And I, I was like freak out. She, cause she said, I'm going to kill myself. If you tell your parents or something that like she was doing that shit. Yeah. And I came down, I was like a little eight year old boy or some shit. And I started crying. So it, either way, this, this, this sadistic fucking story aside, the way she got me not to tell on her, she was like, Hey, Hey, I'm crying and shit. And she's like, guess what? I just heard. They're making a My Girl too, and the boy didn't die. He didn't die. He's still alive. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Because you better not be fucking lying right now because I fucking need that. Like, I, that, that movie fucked me up, but I love it movie. so fucking much, dude. My Girl ruled. That shit was sad, though. Yo, you should have done this when you came downstairs and you saw her, like, 
dead corpse on the floor. He's like, do you see what I see? <laughs> I should have fucking done. And they should have like done like a fucking great dance, like a like you were like conjuring a snake out of a basket. <laughs> sim, sim, <laughs> so like, yeah, you should have done sim, shit like sim, that. Sim, uh, <laughs> yeah, my girl's great. I, that was a deep I, cut. I apologize for that dark story. No, it's fine. You sound like your sister was sadistic as fuck. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, it's it's sociopathic, I'm, even. That's why I'm gay. Um, my number nine is going to be misery. Misery. <laughs> Jay, that what? was nineteen. Jay, that was nineteen ninety. You fucking. Dunce. It literally was on 91. It was 1990, whore. It was on my fucking honorable mentions last week. No, nope, it's not true. I'm, I'm going to look it up. It's not if true. If I'm wrong, I'll suck right. your dick. And if I'm right, it's I'll suck your dick. Not true at all. 1990, Jay. 1990. Well, why the fuck was it on the website? Because you're looking at the wrong website. No, I didn't. I said, I, I put in 1991 box office hits, you motherfucker. So obviously. It was. Because so they still make money in 1991 if they're well, released in December. I guess I don't have a ninth one, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let's just let's just roll no, with it. No, I don't right? want to. No, no, let's just roll with no, it. No, wait, right? I got one. No, give me a second. <laughs> all right, I'll put. You this show fucking no, sucks. No, no, I, I'll put it. Out, no, yeah, yeah, I want to unsubscribe right now, and we're and our fucking co-owner of the shit. Unsubscribe right now. Unsubscribe. Uh, no, uh, okay. Uh, fuck it. I'll do this one. Uh. Shit! I'm all like, I'm all fucking jacked up here right now. Hold on a second. Give me a second. Don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. I'll do that. That's one. good. That's a good one. That's a great one. Well, it needed it. Come on, I didn't ask you to frisk the couch. Well, it needed. It. You don't. You have the car. You don't even take me anywhere anymore. And when was the last time you said you liked you you like you you commented on the house, Kimmy? I drive to work in a Volvo <laughs> with no air conditioning. In the patty, yeah, dude. I mean, it's a great fucking movie. I didn't have it on my list. I had it as an honorable mention. It now must make the list because I was panicking, and it's gonna be there. Okay, That's shut fair. the fuck up. Christina Applegate was extremely cute and hot in that movie. She was. She looked good. She was great. She was innovative. It was wonderful. I loved everybody in that movie, and I think that what's his name, Kenny, looked like Mike Myers, the <laughs> little brother. He looked like Mike Myers. <laughs> I just, dude, I love the guy who worked at the, I like, I looked up to him for some reason. The dude who looked, worked at the chili store and like yeah. always, he, he drove that fucking van and he always had leftovers. I was like, that's an awesome life, dude. That guy's always well, got chili dogs. Yeah, like, he brought the, the fucking, risk. he was a nice guy. He brought the leftovers to her because he found out that she was like working there to get money and there was nobody that was like, there was no food in the house. Clown Dog. Clown Dog was the Clown name. Dog, of it. Yeah. I, I I haven't watched it in years, dude, but I loved great that movie. movie growing up. As a kid, I watched that shit all the time. Uh, little choice. girls must wear dresses. Sugar and spice. <laughs> Sugar and spice. Everything nice. It's a great choice, and I'm glad it was your original choice and the first one that you thought of, and not That's one it. that you replaced at all. First time. Like first time. No, I didn't we are fucking. Thing. We know what we're doing on this show, you guys. Mm -hmm. We're legit movitarians. Sure. Sure. Like I'm carnivores in the woods. I'm a vegan. Uh, my number, <laughs> my number nine is gonna be backdraft, and that's because I oh, like it. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yes, yeah. dude. I mean, oh my god, it's it's a weird movie that it's very very fucking long. It was one of the double decker VHSs that you can get. Oh my god, the cast in this fucking thing, mm. the cast in this movie: Kurt Russell, Robert De Niro, <laughs> fucking other people, um, tons well, of them. One of the Baldwin's, we don't know which. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> dude. Uh, greatest firefighter movie of all time. Probably because ladder 49 frequency uh, on the list, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna call I'm gonna call backdraft the greatest firefighter movie of all time. Movie it was, fucking, it was one of the first kills. movies. Spoiler alert that Kurt Russell died, and I didn't expect him to die in the movie. Fucked you up, fucked you yeah, up. Man. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. The only other time that happened, no, yeah, it was that because Kurt Russell he you're like, what the fuck is going on, dude? It was like when you were shocked at the executive decision when yeah. Steven Seagal died. You're like, what the fuck is going on? Heartbreaker. And the fuck did we get ice cream, you son of a bitch? Heartbreaker. Uh, yeah, backdraft fucking ruled. That's all I know. I need to watch it again because it's very easy to forget, and that's not a knock on the movie. I just I watch it like every four years, and every time I do, I'm like, this is the godfather of fucking yeah. firefighter movies right here. Yeah, we're, we're watching. It's For awesome. Sure. I'm gonna chase my battery, but you go ahead. You go ahead. Um, okay, so my number eight is gonna be. Uh, listen, and no one talk like listen. They never talk about this movie in regards with Joe Pesci ever. Like, it's never brought up. I don't hear a lot of people talk about it anyway. It's the super. Jesus it's the Jesus. super. Shut the fuck up and let me do the reveal. <laughs> Thanks for ruining everything. <laughs> I don't even want to. Yeah, it's the super. 
Are you shocked? No, because you heard some asshole who was changing his battery say it first. But yeah, it is the super. Uh, like, I love this movie as a kid, dude. It's like, as as far as I'm concerned, the super is Joe Pesci's. It's got, it, it's his best comedy. Uh, yes, my cousin Vinny is, is, is amazing as well. But the super, like the way, the, the fact that he gets to like play around as an asshole, it goes, I'm walking like I'm talking, kid. And then somebody shoots and he's like, shit, all that, like the whole thing. The fact that he's a sleazy ass landlord that's sentenced to his own building until he fixes it up, but he wants to be stubborn and be and be a stooge for his dad, and he won't do it. But like he's got this rich boy attitude, dude. I swear to God, it's like it's some of the like the, the most gold comedy I've ever seen in my life. And he's so Joe Pesci. He's a like dude. Yes, this just shows his versatility as an actor. The fact that he's able to play all, <laughs> dude. Like there's like when he's going door to door asking for give me the rip. Give me the rib. And she's like, did you see what those are? Those are rat droppings. And he's like, boy, you really know your shit, huh? <laughs> and she's like, look at my boy. How is he supposed to do his homework? By candlelight? It's like, Lincoln did it. <laughs> so, yeah, dude. Yeah, we can go dude. through all of it. Hang on, I gotta. <laughs> I'm gonna do this. So this is this is a, this is the thing that we can do since YouTube fucks us and and makes us uh, demonetize us. Any anyways, we can show you guys. This <laughs> is that his core? Is that <laughs> yeah. his Corvette? There it is. I can't hear it. Oh shit! Hang on. <laughs> you know he reminds me of dude. He reminds me of like any rich boy that got dropped off into the like the actual hood, the ghetto, and had to live for like a few weeks. And you're like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> and then try to be like a fucking prick about everything. This shit's so dude, Jay's right. This this is one of the funniest fucking jokes. I think it's his best one. Time. I think it's his best dude. comedy, hands down. He's I can't so hear good. it still. I can't I... <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's like... <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> he reminds me of like what if Donald Trump lived in the ghetto <laughs> he looks like, like Donald Trump dude I can see that <laughs> I'm like, he's gonna turn it off too does he like lock it he's like not me he's like did you see anything you didn't see nothing <laughs> he starts laughing <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see anything. You didn't see anything. Not you didn't me. hear that thing? The alarm didn't go off. You didn't hear that? No. Did you hear anything? <laughs> I didn't hear anything either. I didn't hear anything either. <laughs> Did you, I know you didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. Oh, man. We can't watch too much more of it, dude, because we're going to get something hey. in there. Holy shit, morning. the bread is older than the wine. <laughs> yeah. The bread is older than the okay, wine. Let me see. I got my girl coming over. I need some wine. What kind of wine do you have here? Boy. You look like you got... Big Firm. What the fuck is that? <laughs> you expect me to drink screw top wine? Do you want a buzz? <laughs> it's going to have to come from this. Yeah. I'll just get some essentials so we don't starve to death. What's the bread, dude? What's the bread? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Your bread is older than your fucking wine. <laughs> <laughs> this is age. This is see. This should be aged. You, you don't. You get it? <laughs> we don't get too many fucking little in this place or what? Um, I'll have uh, peanut butter. Do you have any peanut butter? <laughs> One kind only. One kind only. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Why oh. is it that you have twenty-four different kinds of pork rinds and you only have one kind of peanut butter? Fuck <laughs> this, dude. <laughs> How close they get? Because we don't get too many fussy little white pricks in here. Watch his face, dude. Oh. <laughs> He's like, oh. Okay. Yeah. And he agrees. I know. <laughs> dude, yeah, that dude. movie's fucking hilarious. I, dude, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, dude. Like, is it Joe Pesci's best con? I got to put it. I got to give it to Joe Pesci's best. You, you get that scene. You get so many great. You get a heartwarming scene with his father toward the end of the movie. And you also get that great basketball scene. Fucking heat starting over here. The whole movie. You know what I mean? That oh, the basketball, basketball was, yeah, that was really great too. Yeah, he goes, he goes, yeah. he was like, Come on, what do you say? He's like, He goes, Hey, look at me, I'm wearing shit that nobody in this neighborhood would wear, so come and rob me. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he was putting, he's like, Can you tell I got money in my fucking tube stocks? He's like, No, of course not. He's like, It's just guys like you, he's like, Guys like you wear that shit. 
Dude, that's a that's a great fucking movie. It's on my honorable mentions. It's a great, great fucking movie. Uh, you guys gotta watch it if you haven't seen it. It's nineties fucking. It's a nineties classic. My number it's eight awesome. is gonna be Showdown in Little Tokyo. Toy I love that. Tokyo. I think that movie's great, dude. Cody hates that movie, which I was shocked. No, he's he's fucking, fucking wrong. He's no, fucking I know he wrong. Is. I know he's wrong. Uh, Dolph Lundgren, about... Dolph Lundgren, and Brandon Lee. Yeah. Buddy cop movie. Dolph Lundgren has a huge dong. All right. Yeah, Brandon yeah. Lee is the karate dude who does roundhouses and shits and fights people. And Dolph Lundgren is the big Arnold Schwarzenegger type. They yeah. go to a Turkish bathhouse and they murder a bunch of dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dolph Lundgren ends up having sex with the chip. You see his giant wiener. It's fucking perfect. It's a perfect film. It's fucking well, I, awesome. I think I, well, it definitely displayed um, the charismatic person that Brandon Lee was. Like, if anything else, yeah. like, it, like he was early and rough in his career in this movie. But it, it, nonetheless, you could see that. That he had that that the uh, it factor in that movie. That maybe the movie wasn't great. There was a lot of, like obviously there was problems with it. I, I I guess, but I still thought it was great, man. Yeah, this is the movie that we're talking about. That the bad guy was fucking great. Like he if you don't have that shit. poster in your garage when you're doing karate, what are you even doing? Yeah, dude. What this are you is even what doing? We're talking about if you haven't seen this movie, you got to get on that shit. These two, Brantley, like he was great in The Crow. He was great in Rapid Fire, but he was also great in this. Nobody talks about this fucking movie. And oh my goodness gracious, uh, they had wow. a Tango and Cash level uh, uh, torture scene that was going on. Look at the abs, mind the abs. Really fucking nice. amazing movie. If you're a fan of '90s action movies, if you're a fan of go back to Golf Lundgren walking. This is a. Uh... This is Tim C. walking on the streets of New York when he was still acting. <laughs> Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Well, he's like, I gotta, right, I gotta, I gotta wrap this up. I got a tennis thing I gotta get to. Come on, Brandon. Look at this dude. Look at this fucking God guy. God damn. And not All to right. mention, that, 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 he's, he's a fucking doctor, dude. Yeah. Like, he's smart and good looking and got a great bod. Amazing. I'm so horny right now as we speak. Great I'm bad horny, guy. I gotta, great I gotta go. Movie. I gotta, I gotta go pee. I, like, I gotta it go let something else. Samurai side fight. All right, go come real quick. Uh, yep, I'll be there. You need it. Yeah, fucking showdown, little Tokyo. If you guys have not seen this movie, you got to get in on it. You really do. I'm telling you, it's the best. It's the fucking best. Nobody listens to me about this movie. Nobody watches it. You you like Lethal Weapon? You like 48 Hours? You like another 48 Hours? You like any of that shit? Beverly Hills Cop? Showdown, little Tokyo is where it's fucking at. It's got it all, and it's already shit. It's a dark fucking movie. Um, gotta watch it. Got to do it. And you're right, JT Customs. Tina fucking Carrera. Come on. Stacy, you are right. Even though we've disagreed a little bit tonight. And I still like the way that you kiss. I, I will tell you this. Um, Alan Richardson's the next action star. That guy's got it. That guy's got it. He could be the next fucking Schwarzenegger. I'm telling you. You guys have to absolutely fucking watch Reacher. It's not like the other boring ass Amazon spy shows and shit like that. Reacher is a fucking 90s schwarzenegger-esque fucking all that shit if you love those movies if you love showdown little tokyo all that shit watch reacher do it new jack shitty's i i that was actually a, a freudian slip new jack shitty egg shin uh it's not on the list i have a a bad relationship with new jack Sh- city because i when i was a kid my dad rented that because we used to watch all these fucking movies right as a kid because they knew i liked them so much like i lived for them uh, those 90s action movies and stuff like that. We watched New Jack City, and it was not what I expected. And I don't know why. I don't remember at all. I got to go back and rewatch that because um, I love so much of the cast. Uh, but as a kid, I was like, this isn't fucking Lethal Weapon. What's going on here? I don't understand. I got to go back and watch that. You're right. I'm glad you said that. Um, anywho, it's because we were racist. That's the truth. We're just all a bunch of racists. We're sitting there why are there so many black people in this film? That's the truth. That's what actually happened. Uh, we, we did live in Kentucky after all. I'm kidding. Hopefully you know that. Jesus Christ. Oh, God. Um, let's go back to the list. My number seven. Shelby! Play the best song in the world or I'll eat your soul. My number eight, seven is going to be The Last Boy Scout because I saw someone just bring it up in the chat and this movie is a fucking classic if you've not seen it another amazing goddamn buddy cop movie um bruce willis straight up john mcclain but he just even it was like die hard three john mcclain uh because he was kind of broke down his wife was fucking him over it was a mess and dude 
I just got to show you the clip. I got to show you the fucking clip. It's it's so good. Uh, hang on one second. I'm going to show it to you because you got to see it because you got to understand truly how great it was. Um, the movie opens up with, uh, and it, by the way, it has, um, my, my brain just died. It literally just died. It has Daniel Harrison as a kid around the Halloween times or whatever. She's Bruce Willis's daughter. His wife's cheating on him. His life's a fucking mess. He's a broke down detective. Damon Waynes is a football player in the NFL. He's fucking hilarious. He's awesome. They hate each other's guts, but they end up teaming up and uh, and solving this murder case. Where directed by Tony Scott, Ridley Scott's brother, did amazing shit. Top Gun of all things. But the best scene from this movie, I've got to show you guys. Uh, oh. Hey, you fucking watch it with those burps, all right? No, nah, no, nah, honey, I'm good. I could have another, but I probably should not. <laughs> the fuck was that? Beans, beans, to make you toot. No, you heard that song, oh, no, Andy, Andy Grammer. I could have another, but no. I probably should not. I got somebody at home. Don't, don't remember that at all. I think it's terrible, and I think you should stop it. You okay? should listen to Andy Grammer. Stop you uncultured man. swine. God damn it. This is the best scene from my number seven, by the way, was The Last Boy Scout. Oh. And I'm about to show everybody why. Is it the is it the opening scene? No, the opening scene is crazy because the football player is running and he just pulls out a gun and just starts shooting people on the football field. It's a crazy story, but check out this scene from the Last Boy Scout, Scout and tell me this is not fucking perfect nineties awesome. <laughs> That's what. Ah, ah, I'm awake. That's how I look every morning after drinking. My wrist, Matt. I warned us to watch out for this guy. Now, fuck that. I love that guy. I fuck can't remember. He was, been in, he was in uh, The Client. Nothing, Great bad shit. guy. I know. Get a cigarette. <laughs> That's what you always ask. Get a cigarette. You asshole. That's a marble red, too. That shit's expensive. Yeah, oh, he's going to give you one. No, like, no, like. Yeah. Fucking amazing. Oh, you <laughs> fucking dick. Let me have a puff. <laughs> Hey, baby. That's after I punched the punch machine at volleyball. Hey, baby. I hurt. (laughs) You just called another grown man, baby, you dumbass. (laughs) Try to be intimidating. This is great. Look at that wig. He's got a hairstyle like mine. <laughs> Bumba, baby. <laughs> he said boomba i know that's like every amateur poker oh, player baby. after they've been playing online for years when they're actually at the big table yeah. son, i'm done son he con aired him Woo. impressive told you fucking that movie's so good dude i love that movie with yeah. all my heart it's my number seven last boy scout daniel harris Damon Wayans. Bruce That's a great movie. I love Nobody it. talks about that movie, by the way. That's weird. It's so fucking great. Well, because I think everything's overshadowed by Die Hard with yeah, Bruce Willis. Yeah, for sure. But he was basically a drunker version of John McClane in that movie. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let me go back to. Uh, uh, touch me again, I'll kill you. Touch uh, that gun, I'll burn you down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, uh, it's gonna be um. Leonhart or Lionheart, as they say in the West. Hey, that was fucking uh, 1990, buddy. No, it fucking wasn't. Yeah, Jay, that was. You got to IMDb these fuckers. It's, you know it's 1990. I fucking quit. It was literally on my list last week. It was on my list. It was. Oh, well, you know what? I am fucking. You know the internet is such goddamn full of liars. She's, I am so <laughs> sick of what the fucking internet has done. Let AI take over the world because obviously people don't even know how to fucking pro- properly program the fucking goddamn movies correctly with the right years when you're trying to do a goddamn good job and you thought you had a goddamn home run winner with that movie. You know what? I don't even fucking know. I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what a backup is. <laughs> you, want do my, you want me to do my number six while you think about it? Why don't you just fucking do the show without me? How about that? I, I, fucking I, tell I, you I, I quit. I quit. All right, go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. I'll look. I'll fucking slink my ass into the hallway and act like I'm fucking doing something. About it. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, fucking fuck. nice. Hey. Oh. This, <laughs> this is 
This show is head to toe legit. Don't we don't get anything fuck. but real facts on this fucking show. You got right? damn right. That's why we're going back. This is real shit. Right I didn't here. even put that in. Like the fucking, why is it like auto fucking movie of the year? I didn't even put that shit in. 1991 movies, you son of a fucking bitch. My number six is going to be Cape Fear. Robert De Niro, a man we talked about earlier tonight. Martin Scorsese made a fucking horror film. And it stars Robert De Niro and Juliette Lewis. And holy fucking tits. And Nick Nolte, by the way. Robert De Niro is scary as shit in this movie. Scary as shit. It's a, it's a, as a prosecutor or no, he was supposed to be his defense attorney, but he didn't do his job. And then when psycho ass Robert De Niro gets out of jail, he decides to start stalking his family, realizes that he's cheating on his wife, realizes his, his daughter is, is not being watched appropriately fucks with them. I do not know why Cape fear is not among like, I think it's better than taxi driver. Like I know people love taxi driver. They talk about it. I think Cape Fear is better than fucking taxi driver. It's one of the scariest, most fucked up stalker films of all time. It's filmed so cool. It's so strange. It has a good fellas ask like sheen to it. Like obviously it was filmed a year later, but it, it's that level of like movie to me, but it's also got this pulpy, like fucking thriller strangeness to it. I don't know. I really had to explain an amazing acting between De Niro and Nick Nolte. Who's trying to protect his family. And fucking Cape Fear is just an amazing movie. It's uh, my number six. Should be higher, honestly. I'm ashamed of myself. Uh, okay. Watch that fucking movie. My number seven is fucking Home Alone. It's about a little kid. He fucks, you know, like he gets left at home and he makes traps and shit. It's really funny. Joe Pesci's in it. And that one guy that's from Bushwhacked. They're really great. Uh, it's such a wonderful movie. Wow. What a great fucking movie. Jay, Jay Home Alone is a really good uh, 1990s film. 1990. You know I'm literally, it's... I'm literally gonna crush my fucking computer into like a goddamn ball. And I thought you back. were fucking with me for a second. No, I'm like, was... I'm looking it's... at 1990 fucking one <laughs> on the fucking Google. It's saying 1991 fucking movies. And when I go, this is a. I went to fucking movie web, movieweb.com, and it lists all the fucking. No, it's not movie web. I went to box office mojo. You got the box office. You got to understand what I'm trying to say, Jay. It says domestic the bo box office for 1991. Home Alone came out in December. So the box office was in 91. That's where you're getting confused. Oh, you fucking shit. All right, fine. Just it's look at IMDb for God's sake. It's City Slickers. I got to right. check it. I'm done with this. City Slickers was 1991. Okay. It we like, got one, baby. I love, yeah, Billy Crystal was fucking great, and, and John Lovitz was amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna let you give your number six because I gotta pee. No, I don't even trust my fucking list anymore. I believe in you. I, this one's gonna be a good one. My number six. <laughs> and I swear to God, dude, if this is a fucking the next year, double impact. That's a 1991 film. Ah, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, my God. I'm so sweaty in the pit region. Double what? impact. Yeah, fuck yeah, yeah dude. I never saw Fuck yeah, it. dude. Okay, so you talk about the versatility of Van Damme, which I was trying to talk about Lionheart. Versatility in this movie was great because he played Alex and Chad. Okay? Chad was an asshole. He was all about ballerina shit, and he was, like, all about wearing pink-ass fucking, uh, you know, like, tight-ass pants, and he was, like, uh, you know, a party boy, a California boy. And then Alex's twin brother, which he hadn't seen in a long time, was like the badass guy, like the guy with the slick back hair and shit that like kind of dealt with gangs and shit over there in Japan. And then they reunite and they clash and then they they team up. It was, you know what? I think Double Impact was what I wanted from a Double Dragon movie. Okay? Uh, and I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry I got heated there. Okay? I, I'm sorry. All right? Because the internet was lying to me. All right? I was like, like... I made like listen. Here's my fucking list, dude. Look, I I, I scratch shit out, like I, I scratch shit out and I put stuff up there, and that pissed me off, dude. Like I put a lot of time and effort into it. It's like ten minutes on my list, and that was bullshit. But anyway, yeah, Double Impact, dude. I think it's one of Van Damme's best movies. It, it's definitely it, like, uh, you're at the, I I feel like yeah, in '91 you're at the height of Van Damme uh, a goodness uh, on films for show, sure. so. Yeah, I liked it a lot. <clears throat> I feel like really awkward. Like I just like, like you know, like, like if you were at like, uh, like a Christmas dinner or something, and then mom and dad got into a fight in front of you. You you just brought your girlfriend over, and she never met your family before, and then your mom and dad like were getting into a huge fight at the dinner table, and then you, your dad like threw a fucking glass of like water into her, your mom's face, and you're like, oh, and then your girlfriend's like, 
just awkwardly eating the mashed potatoes. I feel weird. But anyway, I'm sorry. Double Impact was good. Great movie. What more can you say about it? It's also got some great action. Explosives. Mr. Silk Underwear. You know, great lines, memorable lines. It's so quiet in here. I definitely feel like that kid that tried to cover up a fart with a cough and it didn't work because the cough was softer than the actual balloon fart that came out of your asshole and everybody knows that you did it and they all looked at you and now you're going to get in trouble because the teacher thinks you're disruptive either way my number five this was mentioned earlier i it was going to make my number five list regardless let me just check real quick okay now i'm all fucking like paranoid was this fucking movie out in 1991 okay it was all right uh it uh tmnt secret of the ooze is my number five. Uh, it's a great movie. A lot of people consider it superior to the first one. I don't. I'm not that guy. But I do think it's great. I think that they had more fun with it. It was a lot more energetic. I think the characters were in it were a lot more lively. I think the coolest part about it was Shredder, the super Shredder, um, at the end of the movie. Was it corny? Yes, of course. The Venom Eyes, like Ninja Rap. Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. Yo. It's a green machine. Gonna rock the town without being seen. Have you ever seen a turtle get down? Slide and chip. Anyway, I thought that was great. Was it ob an obvious attempt to cater to kids and be corny as fuck? Yes. But did I care? No. Is it still awesome? Yes. Do the turtles look a little different? Yes. Do I care? No. Uh, I think that actually the turtles, as far as the the um, the Jim Henson designs, I th I still think the turtles costumes were great. Uh, and I they got more personality. They had more. Um, liveliness to them um and i like the april o'neill better in the second one you know the uh, the only thing the second one was missing was kino was a great secondary character it should have had uh, i wanted to see more of casey jones you didn't get casey jones back until the third one and by then it, like he was barely in it so it was kind of horseshit but yeah um i love that movie dude like the the beginning of it like the, you know the way the music comes on and you see the skyline of new york city and everybody's eating pizza and shit it was so cool. And then, the, you know, those bad guys with the the painting hose on their face break into the, I don't know, they break into a fucking toy store. I don't know what they were going to get from that. But, yeah, and then the turtles, like, show up, and then they, they take the pizza from Kino. It was cool, man. Like, Turtles 1 or Turtles 2, uh, Secret of the Ooze, was more of the, the cartoon show. Um, it was more uh, – true to the cartoon show that i remember from the 80s than the first one even though the first one in my opinion is phenomenal and better than the second one the second one is always going to be dear and uh to my heart and fart um so i'll wait i i think yeah well i could get to four do i want to do four yeah maybe i think i will i think i'll do four i think i will okay uh my number four is going to be a very underrated gym a thousand percent underrated as hell uh, from Wes Craven. Uh, the people under the stairs. Okay. Double checking. Going to Google. The people under the bra. Under the stairs. 1991. Okay. We're good. Uh, I'm going to have to do that on every one of them now, apparently. But the people under the stairs at number four for me, I think it is absolutely one of Wes Craven's most unheralded movie to date. It was so slick. It was so cool. It was different. And it and it was like creepy because that could happen. Like this deranged psycho uh, religious couple, which happened to be brother and sisters, not from Kentucky, but they could have been, that are like greedy and hell bent on controlling um, their purses for, you know, like controlling the neighborhood they lived in forever. Or, or the um, the 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 buildings they they can you know, they owned, and then just the 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 weird it was so fucking weird, dude. And then when the girl gets in there and she meets Roach and and all the other kids that they had stolen and kidnapped over the years, man. And then the the one girl getting thrown into the hot scolding ass fucking water, and she's like, "The fires of hell are hotter than that." Like that shit scared me, dude. That that red haired bitch fucking scared me, dude. Because I will find you. Her husband reminded me of Joe Bob Briggs. Her husband reminded me of Joe Bob Briggs. Um, but yeah, it's number four for me. Wes Craven's People on the Stairs. 
one thousand percent. It's in my top fives for sure. What was your um, What was your number five? Uh, my number five was uh, Turtles Two: Secret of the Ooze. Yeah. And then yeah, uh, number four was the people under the stairs. I like it, and I moved to strike. Um. Yeah. All right, so that puts me at my yeah my number five, which is going to be. <laughs> oh my God, we're like butt butt brothers. It's Team T two Secret of the Ooze, mm. dude. I will tell you this: I like Secret of the Ooze better than I do. I know, I, I, I know. I, I said some people do like it better than the first one. I do, dude. That opening was so fucking. That's what classic. I said. The skyline of New York with them eating pizza and shit. It was cool. Yeah, dude. And then when they come in and that dude uh, tries to break up the the robbery, or whatever. <laughs> the best scene of that entire movie too is when Donatello turns into that thing and it's like. Ooh. <laughs> and he posts, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't like it's. It's a little too quiet. It's a little too rough. It's a little too rough. Yeah, well, the the, the kid's name is Kino. Oh, that's it. Yeah, and, uh, dude, and the, w- I love their new digs when they moved into the nicer part of the the subway, subway. or whatever. Yeah. All that shit was nice and set up. That was so cool looking. I love how dude that movie goes by so fast. It's like a, it feels like it's twenty five minutes because it's good. Yeah, dude, it's so good. And of course, it ends with ninja, ninja, rap, ninja. Well, fucking, I, I was saying, about. like, I liked Kino a lot as a secondary side character, but I really wish they had just brought back Casey Jones. I would have rather had that, you know, the, the relationship more explored with them than Kino. Like, they only I, I brought did. back, they only introduced Kino because I, I would imagine because the guy that played Casey Jones wasn't available. And he only got yeah. him in the third one, and he was barely in it. Elias Codier. I do. I fucking, I love that guy though. Cause remember when he was riding those, he was, he was doing the bike. He, that girl was, he's like, Hey, you want to ride? And he's like, well, you're fat anyway. Or whatever he said. Yeah. Drove away. Yeah. I dude, I love, and the ooze, man. I always wanted one of those. There's those companies that make those canisters of the ooze. I want one so fucking bad. Cause that green slime was just the most nineties thing ever. I love yeah. T too. Um, number it's four. It's roomy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the cover dude, that VHS cover, the it's white with the two behind it. Fuck. That was so cool. And every time I watch that, I need to I need to eat pizza while I watch it. Um, I've still never had New York pizza. I really want to try it, like from New York. I've had it close to New York. Well, also, yeah, I remember Super Shredder was fucking badass, and Dude. he was also played by uh, Kevin uh, from WCW, uh, Big Diesel, Diesel, uh, Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash played him. Yeah, in that fucking, role, he was rude as shit to us when we yeah, met him. But this, I'm not was- going to support your bad habits, Kevin. <laughs> we were standing we were just we were talking to somebody like we were meeting somebody uh, like right there and we were just talking to the convention and we're like hey how's it going or whatever and his handler their table was in front of us so his handler there was nobody in his line but his handler was like um he was sitting there like and his handler was like uh are you guys in line to meet kevin no 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 uh she was like could you please we're like oh sorry we're We're standing standing here yeah um yeah this is stupid it was weird jay jay what you want to do karate in the garage? Because my number four is the people under the stairs. Oh, okay, okay. Dude, fuck it. You want to talk about a movie that had a lot to say, but never, ever, ever showed their cards. Like, you literally, it was just fucking there. And it, yeah. and it felt real and it felt natural. Like, all these movies they make today, everybody complains, politics, this and that. People under the stairs had so much to fucking say, and it did it in such a smart, subtle fucking way. The mom and the dad were so fucking scary in that movie, dude. So fucking scary. Uh, I, I I forgot the guy's name. Uh, he was also in Child's Play Three. He was the haircut dude. He was the dude that was cutting their hair. Yeah, he's he so. Was a, he was great. Um, uh, and then uh, Bing Rains was great in it too. Yeah, dude, fucking awesome. People are stairs. I, Run, I really fool. Ronnie goes. He called me a fool. He's the fool. <laughs> he's the fool. I fucking hate. Um. I hate the fact that they're remaking this, that Jordan Peele is going to remake awful, this movie. You know? uh, it, it's it, it's a perfect movie. It really does not need to be touched ever. You can never do it better than the original. That's not remakes, what remakes are supposed to be about. That's as bad as remaking Back to the Future for me. Um, you're never going to make it better than it originally was. People on Stairs is one of the scariest, most fucked up, dark, crispy, and it could happen. Feeling. And it could happen. Yeah. Also funny movies that just like, that movie had it all, man. I love that it's movie like so that much. Part, one of Wes Craven's be- best. Like when he like thought he killed a fool, and he like Ever drives that bay- he he drives that bayonet, and and then he like opens the wall up, and he was like, "Oh shit!" He's like, "You killed Prince, <laughs> <laughs> killed their dog." Yeah, dude, that 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 movie's fucking amazing, dude. It's amazing. Wes Craven made Freddy, 
He made fucking ghost face. He did people under the stairs. Hills well, have fucking eyes. Last house on the left. That guy is the greatest horror director of all time, in my opinion. No, in my opinion. no it's John Carpenter. But I will say that the people under the stairs 100% never gets the recognition that it deserves. Like nobody remembers it or they don't talk about it. Also, the people under the stars was really good too. I, I like that. It was that a, was a, it was a that, sequel to the fault in our stars. That was the, the well, that was going to be the sequel, and then they realized that there was no reason to have a sequel. It's true, it's true. They should have yeah. stuck with that. <laughs> so my number three is going to be uh I, I i some people are like what the fuck for hell but you know what apparently i fucked up this list anyway so i don't give a shit uh it's going to be bill and ted's bogus journey that I, is correct yeah i i know it's like you're we're dead dude no way yes way ted uh i i love this movie dude listen is it as good as excellent adventure i mean technically no but i had just as much fun watching bogus journey as a kid than I did just as much as I did with Excellent Adventure. William Sadler as Death is what makes that movie so fucking great. Obviously, uh, Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter are they're you know you can't they're they're awesome. But William Sadler coming in as Death and then challenging them to a game and then losing every time. He's like, uh, "You must play me again." It's like, "No way!" Dude's like, "Yes way!" And then they play like clues, like I believe Colonel must the study with a candlestick. Sorry, Death, you lose. It was Professor Plum. I said Plum. Like, <laughs> and they and he's like, best to say, it's like, damn right. You do, there's so many cool moments damn in this right. movie. Yeah, there's so many cool moments in this movie. Uh, and it's all it's all just fun, dude. Like, I think it's really cool. Uh, and I have a lot of fond memories of it. The one of the, the, the biggest fond, the, the most fond memory I have is rent uh, renting it on VHS and then popping it in and the first video, like it, it, there's a music video of Slayer before you get to the movie. And it was like, that was so cool. It was like, shout, shout it out. Tell me what's on your mind. And what it's all about. Like it was like that pure 1990. And it was like show showing the film. I, I remember, dude, I love that movie. Like it's not it, like it, it was going to be in my top five, no matter what, but yeah. Yeah, excellent. So it, it made my own mentions. It did not make my top ten. I, I wanted it to though. It hurt my it hurt it's my like, sorry, snacks. They melted me. They melted me. <laughs> What's about my butt? I work out all the time and reaping burn lots of calories. Okay, uh, William Sadler was the best part of the uh, fourth one too. I want to call it a remake, but it's not. But the, the fourth one, no, he's William like, Sadler coming back. Yeah, what about your fu- come on, Death? You did like three hour like solos. Like I am what science. I have. <laughs> I have a lot of time. <laughs> uh, that dude is the fucking best, dude. My yeah, number three dude. is going to be Point Break. I one knew it was greatest... going to be on your list. I knew yeah, it was going to be. Uh, one of the greatest action movies of all time. Keanu Reeves doing pure ass Keanu Reeves. Like, what? Like, fucking uh, him and Patrick Swayze. Not a buddy cop movie, but it technically was because Keanu Reeves was a buddy cop with Nick Nolte's character. Uh, not Nick Nolte. Uh, motherfucking Gary Busey. Uh, and then it still technically was kind of a buddy cop movie the way him and Patrick Swayze, but they were, they were adversaries kind of like a demolition man, Stallone versus snipes or whatever. But yeah, dude, uh, amazing fucking surfing movie, a heist movie, a great Keanu movie, fucking an anytime watcher. That's just a, like, there's no movie fucking like point break. Another completely unnecessary remake. You can't remake that fucking movie. You cannot fucking do it. And they yeah. tried it. Like, why, why, why? Because, they wanted to make some money. Yeah. And on didn't. the stop show. We're crazy <laughs> um, Yeah, Point Break's great. Uh, I don't have it on my list at all, but I did like it. Um, my number two is going to be uh, Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, what, I mean, what can you really say about this movie? We all know it's great. We all know it's uh, like Anthony Hopkins is a powerhouse in it. Jodie Foster does great. It's a great, well-written uh, serial killer story. Got a lot of twists, turns, and come in your face because it does happen to her. Literally, that guy throws come in her face, and I never thought you'd see that in a mainstream movie that was outside of a porn. Come in her face, yeah. but uh, otherwise, yeah, it's a great film. Uh, a lot of memorable characters. Hannibal Lecter is there's a like you can't make a horror movie uh, list of villains without putting him in there somewhere. Like just as far as like how creepy and how maniacal he was, how smart he was, which made him even more creepy is the fact that he was so intelligent. He knew what he was doing and like it, he kind of got a kick out of it. Um, and it, it really did in a lot of ways. I think that was the first time I'd watched the movie that really redefined the genre as it were in a lot of ways. Like, you know, you, you usually see like an action cop 
you know, movie taking on the bad guy. And it was like guns blazing. And it was like, it really didn't delve deep into the psychological horror like Signs of the Lambs did. And a lot of movies came out after this and were directly inspired, like Seven and like other films that, you know, um, I, I can't remember. There was another movie that was kind of like, uh, not paranormal, but it was like really gritty. I guess End of Watch, but that was like way later. But th this movie showed you like the true underbelly of society in a way that really no other movie had done before. And the fact that this could, like it wasn't even the, put like maybe this could happen. This probably had happened in some way because they took a lot of inspiration from, this is like a Dahmer, uh, Gacy kind of story all tied. In. Like there's a lot of shit in this movie that's really fucked up. And uh, again, Anthony Hopkins, did he win an Academy Award? I, I think that Jodie Foster he did, and, and it won Best Picture too. Yeah, at the so it, yeah, that, and I think I think that we talked about that. I think that it was the only a horror movie or considered horror movie that ever won uh, an Academy Award. Like yeah, ever. and they didn't want to call it that then. They wanted to call it a drama. Uh, it's my number two as well, Jay. It is mm. because we're dirty little whores in the in that. I can't wait to do night. more. Hey, so me and him are thinking about making bunk beds. Can we do that or not? <laughs> yes, we've got so much room for activities. Uh, dude, I just watched this like a week and a half ago again and cannot believe how blown away I was by fucking Anthony Hopkins' performance. Uh, yeah. It did not translate in Hannibal the same way at all. But Anthony Hopkins no. wasn't a huge actor this time. He was doing like, you know, a play, a lot of play shit and stuff like that. And when he got this job, he was like, oh, my God, this could change my career. He was about to give up trying to be big in America or whatever. But, dude, when he walked in there and he did that role and he didn't blink, there was almost no movement on his face when he spoke except for yeah. his mouth. And the way he just fucking, hello, Chris. Like, mm -hmm. that fucking, dude, that was the most scary. Was, I honestly think that if you look at every single like most badass whatever however you do it but if you want to talk about pure fear the scariest performance i think that anthony hopkins as hannibal lecter in the original science of the lambs is the scariest horror performance by some by, by a character with dialogue of all time yeah um dude the way that he was like he was like tell me what did brick say to you and she was like he said he could smell my cunt sir he was oh. like i can't but I do smell that you're wearing oil of Olay. <laughs> way you God damn it, dude. You're it this smells like it, it smells a little bit like miracle whip and tuna, but I won't comment <laughs> on that. Uh, well, here's like, the thing. Well, the, he I said just take a test of me once and I ate his liver with a fucking fava and key, Andy. Well, and he, and he, he, fava beans. But you know, the yeah. thing, he was, uh, there's something like he played that part like he was like, like it was like reptilian. Like it was like a fucking reptile watching you. Yeah, dude. Like you know, like when you look at like when you see a lizard or a snake or something like that, and you're like, and you see it, and like it looks at you with like it. Obviously, they're not human eyes, but they're like this like intelligence behind it. But it's like so alien, and it's like you know, like that. You know that you know you know I guess it's like a reptilian stare. Like, um, and you can't you know there's intelligence, but you don't know the motives, what they want to do, and why they want to do it. That's what yeah. I got from him in that movie, and uh, dude, not just that. But uh, Buffalo Bill was so fucking yeah. good in that. Role. Well, he was so like, good. he was overshadowed because Anthony Hopkins was so great. He was, but like, and they caught so much shit for that movie. Uh, and and the guy said he was like he was like, no, this was never supposed to be an LGBT character. This was a guy who hated oh. himself so much that he wanted to get so far from himself as he could, so he dressed like a woman so he could pretend to be somebody else. It wasn't about that. They, they got a lot of yeah. shit for that, but dude, he was so fucking good in that oh yeah they like they uh they ride it at the not ride they protested the Oscars well, I, and all I, that I didn't even know i didn't care about sexuality it was just like a creepy guy that liked to fucking put women in holes and like rub lotion yeah. but dude that guy was so fucking good and he's actually like it's hilarious to watch i was like it puts the lotion in the basket or against the holes of god like and, and yeah. obviously like would you fuck me i'd fuck me and, that, <laughs> yeah. and then play wild horses now the, the, yeah, the face yeah. Do you have any, like, makes. imagine if you were the director and you're like, and you're watching, you're like, all right, you got to dance naked in front of that mirror and tuck your dick in and like dance. Yeah. And now we got, and then you're like watching you like, you know, wild horses would go great with this scene. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's so perfect, weird. Dude. But if you watch it, it's so funny the way he tucks it back when he goes, he goes, <laughs> his face when he does it. If you watch, like you guys got to watch this scene. Cause he's like, he looks around, he goes. <laughs> then he goes yeah, back his because it's touching his asshole. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's touching his amazing, asshole. And it feels dude. good. 
It's so good. That movie, that, but honestly, to God, like uh, from a from a serial killer movie perspective, the way that they zoom in and when they when you realize that the cops aren't at the right house and Clarice mm-hmm. is there by herself and they zoom in on the FBI director's face, he's like Clarice. And then she's in that that house and then the lights go out and that fucking he's standing there watching her with the night with the uh with the uh night, the night goggles, night vision goggles, and it's like he reached out to like, oh <laughs> like touching her. <laughs> yeah, dude, that is so fucking scary. That movie is not not only and and the escape scene when Harold Lecter escapes dude it's like uh it reminds me of like the opening to speed with the people in the in the um in the Mars. elevator mixed oh, with yeah. like a scene from 7 his escape scene where he eats that dude's face and escapes and he hangs the dude from the thing fucking just unreal dude that movie is one of the greatest films of all time i mean i well, <clears throat> it, it might possibly crack the top 10 greatest films ever fucking made it's that goddamn good in my opinion that good it's up there but i will say um as far as like this movie itself uh signs of the lambs it would be number one on the list except for a little movie that is going to be my number one now that's coming in strong and hot and sexy and we all know he's not wearing underwear under that those leather pants we're talking about terminator 2 judgment day starring richard simmons power hour and he's going to show you how to work out and be a terminator on your own in the bed and in life but yeah so (laughs) terminator 2 judgment day i mean what the fuck do you want to talk about all right what do we need to discuss all you got to do is put t2 down yeah see mike has it too what do you you just got to put t2 down and everybody know what's going on okay it's one of the greatest movies of all time it's a movie that literally the special effects in that movie still hold up the day the movie itself is expertly written it, like, should there have been any more Terminators after this? No. Did they do a great job closing the circuit? Yes. Yes. Is it emotional at the end? Yes. Is it action packed throughout? Yes. Is Robert Patrick sexy? Yes. I will say I do him. It is everything that Terminator One and as great as Terminator One was. I love Terminator One. It does everything what Terminator One did, but does it like three hundred and fifty thousand percent better. I will say Terminator 1 is more of a... If you watch Terminator 1 as a horror movie, it's abs- it's, it's absolutely a horror movie. Terminator 1. I would immediately say it. But they do every... like, And, J- and it was on a, also on a lower budget, and you could tell. But James Cameron saw what he did great with Terminator 1, and then he just amplified that in Terminator 2 and added so many great characters and moments. And and, and the storyline... Dude, the opening of this movie, holy fucking shit, dude. The, the, the music... The dialogue, the characters, the interactions, the chemistry. I mean, I like smarter guys than us to have gone through this movie, like literally probably frame by frame and explained why it's so good. But this movie, man, it lights up all all the all the it, it, if there's a like when you rate a movie and it's gotta be a 10, it's gonna be a 10. It lights up all the lights that make it a 10. You know what I mean? It lights up every check mark it needs to light up cinematography um setting production uh characters acting dialogue direction photography editing all of it everything it's beautiful dude it's and i mean we all have seen terminator 2 we i mean i'm pretty sure all of us have seen terminator and like it like this motherfucker should be like a required movie to watch when you come out the vagina so immediately immediately number one Show them. I uh, totally agree with you. Uh, there's nothing else you can say about the movie. It's the greatest action movie of all time. I think that's almost. It's a, it's a, you could argue it, but it's a hard thing to argue. It's got it all. It's 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 a large scope. It feels it, it, the movie feels like it's 40 minutes long. It's not at all. It's long as shit. It's got better effects, special effects than movies today do. Uh, talk about top tens of all time. It would probably be in the top ten movies of all time for most people. Uh, great Arnold performance, great Robert Patrick performance, awesome sci-fi, awesome storyline. Just it's got it fucking all. And uh, Sarah Connor, fucking amazing. That dude who licks the side of her face—that was so oh, fucking gross. Gross. Uh, fucking so nasty. Well, got and great also comedy and, in it. Yeah, it, and and also uh, it was one of the last few movies that that's just how you do strong women right. Oh yeah, she was Linda awesome. Hamil- Linda Hamilton was great in both, but she really comes into her own in the second one. But they didn't make it where she was like just some like Mary Sue, like I got all the fuck, fuck you, I don't need men, I don't need a term. You know, it wasn't like that. It was yeah. like done right. You cared about the character and you cared about her struggle, just like you did with yeah. Ripley in the Alien movies. But yeah, dude, I mean, and, and, and yeah, you're right. Like it looks better. 
in a lot of ways than movies that have like twice its budget that rely on strict CGI only. Yeah, and they were no, using like dude. they were using CGI, of course, but it was in its early stages, and you had to pick and choose where you were going to put it and make it look good. But there was a lot of practical effects going on too, that just like mixing and combining those two, dude, it, like there's something about that movie, the way that it was shot and the way that they, they filmed it, that it will forever stand the test of time. Like in a in hundred fucking more years, it will still look good. Fucking a, it totally will. Uh, you know, what's crazy about this, you guys, uh, the movies on this list that we have commentaries for full movie commentaries that we watched are T2 silence of the lambs, the people under the stairs, uh, teenage mutant Ninja Turtles two, uh, and maybe that's it. But like four, at least maybe we did double in. Maybe no, we didn't do double impact. No, yet. I thought but we did. Maybe, yeah, at least four. Did we these got movies, uh maybe we did i can't remember for sure if we did or not but like yeah almost half of the movies on this list we have commentaries for on our patreon the 90s were an amazing fucking time 1990 was the same way we're gonna keep doing these lists wait till we get to 95 like it's insane to think about how amazing movies were in the fucking 90s dude these yeah. movies these lists are fucking insane like i feel like it took a nosedive around 90, 97 though i think there was a nosedive in quality of movies i don't know i it's can't remember got weird 97 sure. i think 98 was good i think 99 was a little odd and then 2000 was okay but 97 i just remember not I, maybe they're like i think executive decision came out that year i just felt like there <laughs> was, was movies that came out like i didn't give a shit about yeah it's gonna be interesting to look at these year by year on a basis and then compare them to each other for sure um trying to see here but by the way i'm also that. i'm not I, i'm gonna say that so it's like i thought you didn't care about it if it makes my top 10 executive decision because the movie's still good i like leg was ammo and kurt russell in that movie i just think it was like it was such an odd like that was the first time i'd ever been exposed to clickbait they have steven seagal on the fucking cover with kurt russell and it's yeah, like dude. It's, it's promising you that it's, it looks like kurt russell and seagal are going to be like a buddy cop movie and it's like fuck <laughs> you. like and we didn't have the internet back then that was like you know it wasn't everywhere so you didn't know like they lied two of uh two of the most um disappointing movies to see in theaters as a kid's our age was um was executive decision because you thought seagal was going to be in the whole movie yeah. and like you thought he had a hollywood uh a hollywood budget and, and him and kurt russell when he dies he goes we're not gonna make it it's like you will i can't believe uh, that he didn't he like agreed to that too i can't yeah, believe he agreed to that that was this he's like i'll fight and, wind i'll fight gravity i should beat it up Gravity yeah, can't power, win. the power rangers movie is pretty disappointing too because mm. they weren't even in their suits for half the fucking movie and then batman and robin was one of the most disappointing movies we ever saw oh yeah in the theater was, as well uh, yeah it was that so weird. Was crazy. I, I remember they hyped that shit up too because like the um uh cody i maybe i bought it too i don't know uh one of you all had uh they had gone and bought the batman and robin album the soundtrack and because the cover looked cool like again you're you're talking about an age where you know not everyone had aol you know dial up so you couldn't go on the internet and just look up reviews and shit. So you just had yeah. to trust like what you saw. And the and the and the and I gotta be honest, like when I first saw the 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 image of the Batman and Robin, where it was like the Batman symbol with the Robin symbol in it and it all red, I was like, that's fucking cool. It's gonna be a great movie. And then the soundtrack released first, and I think either one of us or two, uh, two of us got the soundtrack, it was Jewel. I'm like that should be a that, <laughs> that should be a fucking like uh, uh like a uh, like a warning symbol because like, I don't know like, they didn't even play that fucking song in the movie. This, well, the soundtrack wasn't even that bad either. They had that R. Kelly's Gotham City. I like though no, I like Gotham City, but the Jewel song. City of Justice. And I was like, what the fuck is that? Because they didn't even City play that song, peace. and I was like, it was already a it was it was already a single for her. And I'm like, but, the, yeah. but and then we went and I was like, what the cotton candy bullshit is this? <laughs> that movie was so disappointing, dude. We bought all the toys. We bought the magazines. We bought the McDonald's cups. We were so fucking in after Batman Forever. And Batman Forever wasn't even that good. But for some reason, we thought Batman and Robin, we were sold a bill of goods with Batman and Robin. And going to see that in the theater, I'll never forget being a kid and watching that going, oh my, this sucks. Like, movies were so good in the 90s when we were growing yeah. up you usually weren't disappointed you would usually go to see a movie and you might not even know what it was your dad would go take you to go see it. golden eye uh robin hood prince of thieves by the way honorable mention 1991 robin hood prince of thieves um you would go see these movies great great uh, oh great artist hell yeah and by the way uh just in case i forgot any awesome 1991 Please movies give me i can't uh, stop loving you <laughs> father of the bride great 91 movie Naked hot shots done great 91 movie drop dead fred fucking hilarious great 91 movie dark surprisingly dark 
Um, Double Impact, that was on Jay's list. Um, Out for Justice was 91 as well. Was, Suburban wanted, Commando. I, oh, shit, dude. I wanted to put, yeah, I wanted to put uh, a, a Seagal movie in. I didn't, I just yeah. don't think it holds up to the other movies. Even no, it does. Out for, Just- for Justice is great, though. I love Out for Justice. The only problem with Alpha Justice is that he just did not. I'm looking for anybody seen Richie. Uh, the only problem with Alpha Justice is that maybe, maybe I kind of got bored. No, you're you're thinking of uh, where he uh, where he was above uh, the law, I think. No, um, uh, no, you're right. Alpha Justice, he was a uh, Italian, he was like an Italian. Um, well, fuck. Uh, it, Nico, Nico, Nico was definitely above the law. Okay, but, then, yeah, okay, you're thinking above the law. But uh, Alfred Justice, he was up against the senator. Like, or mm. I, I, I get they, they all kind of run together a little bit. But Alfred Justice, there just wasn't a good enough bad guy for it. Uh, Suburban Commando was fucking awesome. Bingo, uh, the fucking movie really Bingo good. with that dog, amazing fucking. And, and, and that was a, remember Denver, like uh, the the dad was a Denver Bronco in those old he school was, helmets. He was a kicker for the Broncos, and he got traded oh, yeah. to the Packers, so they moved to Wisconsin. I, I do want to warn you, you fellas with kids, do not watch Bingo with your kids. It's a kid's movie, and I enjoyed it as a kid, but I watched it with my uh, youngest daughter, and I pretty much scarred her for life because that she, movie's dark as Bingo fuck. didn't die, though. Bingo didn't die. Bingo did not die, his name-o. But he, that was, there was some fucked up stuff that happened. And finally, uh, the last movie I want to mention from that list is V.I. Wachowski. Do you remember V.I. Wachowski? No. Fucking, she was a badass. That sounds like some of, shitty ass fucking piano tutorial. I don't know. She ruled, that. dude. She was great. Uh, that she she fucking ripped. She kicked ass. It reminded me of Carmen San Diego, but it's VR Marshalski, and she sounded like this. She sounded like Sean Connery. She talked. It's weird. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, um, Nico, dude. Speaking of James J- uh, Pierce Brosnan, that's an amazing icon. Yeah, mm-hmm. Nico. Uh, can you guess my 1991 film from this quote? The parole board's ready, Blake. I hope you remember to floss. I did. With your wife's pubic hair. <laughs> that sounds really familiar. That's a great quote. I gotta look what it up. The, well, hold on, that. that uh, I'll wait until if you know. Well, give me a second before you cheat, Game Genie. Well, I, I don't know, so I'm gonna look it up, and you, if you tell me, you know. Like, think, use your brain muscles. The parole, the parole board's ready, Blake. I hope you remember the flaws I did with your wife's. 1991. It's gonna be a court. Uh, i don't know i I give up i'm not getting so look right here look right um here there's a movie circled there and you guys probably can't see it but there's a couple movies circled there and i and when i was going through my list i circled movies that i've never seen before that i want to check out and one of them is ricochet and it's from a movie called ricochet with john uh john lithgow and i believe denzel washington's in that movie as well uh, movies from 91 I needed to see were JFK, Ricochet, My Own Private Idaho, Sleeping with the Enemy, and The Hitman. You haven't seen JFK or Sleeping with the Enemy? I have not. Never seen them before. Oh, uh, need to check them out. Uh, the Hitman with Chuck Norris, I did watch. But do you remember, dude, in uh, uh, Sidekicks, with, when uh, Jonathan Brandis would daydream about fucking shit up with Chuck Norris? Yeah, he, it was yeah. that movie. I know. Yeah, The Hitman. Uh, you, I thought you'd seen Hitman. Yeah, I got to go back and watch it for sure. JFK um, was great. Uh, JFK, uh, long as fuck, though. It's like Hoffa, way fucking long. Yeah, that's why I never watched it before. Never found the time. The JFK movie, uh, back on, uh, I remember renting it uh, on, on VHS, and it was two tapes. That oh, shit yeah. was long as fuck, dude. It's long as shit. I mean, detailed. But back then, any Kevin Costner movie I, like is long. The Postman was like three and a half yeah. hours, but it was great. Dances with Wolves, um, JFK, obviously. The Postman. Uh, yeah, post and we're missing one too. There's another. There's another like fucking double. For him, Waterworld wasn't yeah. that long. Uh, the Waterworld was a. It was like three hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was another one. <laughs> three hours sure. of horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Trey, what's up, dude? He said, "What's up, dudes?" Just okay. finished watching the. Just watched the movie Speed again recently, and damn, I forgot how good that movie is. Uh, Ken's ma'am. Ken's ma'am. It's just Ken's. That's what he says. Like Ken's ma'am. Yeah, dude. It's just Ken's. Yeah, dude. That, too, what a fucking movie, dude. Speed. Like, I, it was at that point that I knew 100% that Keanu Reeves had sold his soul to Satan. Because <laughs> you, you, two years after Bogus Journey, you come out looking hot as fuck with your shaved head, and then yeah, you're dude. on a bus. I'm on a fucking bus, and I'm cool as shit, dude. And I'm wearing, like, a white muscle t-shirt with, like, a plaid shirt over it. And I'm badass, and I'm hanging out. And I got Sandra Bullock wanting me. I was like, there's no fucking way that this is the same guy that was literally five minutes ago talking about tubular, dude. So, dude. great fucking movie, though. Uh, all he the way, so, 
Speed was so fucking good. That speed, when I remember Speed 2, I'm like, oh, yeah, Speed 2. They're going to bring back Keanu Reeves. And nope, it's not Keanu Reeves. It's Sutter uh, Bullock, but no Keanu Reeves. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah, dude. He was so fucking good in that movie, man. He was such a badass. He's shooting that gun. He's like, with the mystery guest, please sign in. A uh, fucking awesome dude. And he's like, remember when, uh, 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 oh, God, what's his name? Dumb and Dumber guy. Um, oh, uh, duh. Um, uh, f- dude, if you had said, Jeff Daniels. Jeff Daniels. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to go home. <laughs> this is me and Jay at the bar. He's like, I'm going to go. They're getting their award. He's like, I'm going to go home, have some sex. He's like, Harry, you're going to go home and puke. He's like, I might do that too. <laughs> Fucking love speed. Dude. Well, also, Dennis, Dennis Hopper was great. Dude, Dennis Hopper was. was one of the best bad guys ever. He's like, he's sitting there. Literally, he's a terrorist. And he's got all this shit going on. But meanwhile, he's eating a sub and he's watching the football game. He's like, oh, come on. I got 50 bucks on I, this game. I, I love it. I love the laid back approach. I also love like, do you remember his face when uh, he had Jeff Daniels' character, Harry, and he was like holding him? And he was like, and then uh, Keanu was like, someone's got to shoot the hostage. And he like, actually fucking shoots Jeff Daniels to get him yeah. away. And then Dennis Hopper's face is like, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you fucking broke protocol to do that. This is such a Sorry. great fucking movie, man. It's awesome. Excellent choice. Vinny, what's up, buddy? He says, Mike is pit stained from Pete and Pete. Oh, dude, yeah, dude. I Pete and Pete never so get, good. I never get fucking pit stains, dude. I don't know what's happening tonight, but I must be stressed out about these lists because that's never happened to me before. Yeah, but Pete, Maybe and Pete, once. Pete and Pete's great. I remember Pete and Pete back in the day. I don't remember Pete and Pete, honestly. I remember the name. Remember, I can't, I can't. You know, the two red-haired boys, the brothers, Pete and Pete. I one remember was the fat and the other one's really skinny. I can't connect it though with anything. I can't. Mm-hmm. Um, Jacob, I saw the Skiba interview and loved it. By the way, have you guys ever seen No Retreat, No Surrender? It's an early JCVD movie where he is the bad guy and the main character gets trained by a hallucination of Bruce Lee. LOL. I liked it. Yeah. Um, I was not a huge fan of it. I understand why some people love it because, like, maybe nostalgia reasons. Yeah. It was like, I like it was interesting to see um, Jean Claude as a bad guy because you don't normally see that ever. But it, like he, like the movie is, uh, it's made, it's made on a very tight budget and it's a very straightforward movie and it's like, uh, it's like yeah, so we got this bad guy and he's gonna wear he's gonna wear a suit and he's really he's really good looking and he's built and then we're gonna have this like loser kid that does karate with uh, a not Mr Miyagi and then he's gonna take him on in a, in a kickboxing ring and he's gonna win and we're gonna do a cheap ass celebration. I understand, like I get what they were going for, but at the end, I didn't like it. I liked the soundtrack. I thought the the um, the main song of that movie was great, but yeah, I was not a huge fan of that movie. Yeah, it's definitely it's no Karate Kid, it's no Bloodsport, it's neither of the, but it's like a weird mix between. Like when you first watch it for the first time, and you're like, oh my god, like this has like one of the four table legs of an awesome karate movie. Uh, yeah. but it's it's hilarious to watch Sean Claude in that. And yeah, it's not a bad watch. If you've never seen it, you guys should totally watch it. Uh, One sure. time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Abs- abs- absolutely. Love you, Jacob. You're the fucking best. Thank you, man. Rule. Uh, Michael Parton, let's make an adventure film, Secret of the Cums. Jesus Christ, Michael. Did you just hack our account? Like, through the hackers for Insomniac? <laughs> Thanks you for ruining ruined everything script, dude. for 2024. Thanks for ruining our script. We've been working on it for six months. Secret Coming of the Cums was what we were going to do. Yeah. We've been uh, doing deep, deep, deep research. Deep seat. What do you what do they call it? Deep. <laughs> he said, let's make an adventure film Seeker of the Cup. <laughs> Seeker of the Cup Cup. An adventure film. Full that's of that's actually the sequel. Sticky. Secret of the cum cums. Uh, Derek says, Girl from Babysitter's Dead or Adventures of Babysitting. I'm gonna go Babysitter's Dead personally. Uh because well, I don't you got remember Christine Babysitter. Applegate and the uh, and you got Christine Applegate uh from yeah. Uh, dude, I don't know. Back in the, I mean, Christine Applegate is hot as fuck. Back, I mean Kelly yeah. from Married with Children. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Christine Applegate, dude. One thousand percent. Uh, Elizabeth Shue. Elizabeth Shue. One. Yeah, she's she was also from. Uh, she was also in Karate Kid. Yeah, she was really. I feel like Elizabeth Shue was really cute, and and you'd marry her. But Christine Applegate was like fiercely intelligent and sexy, but she also had her own mind and wouldn't just be like. You know what I mean? Like, okay, well, I guess. But you have to, like, kind of tame her a little bit. Do you know who... Do you, do you know who fucking I don't think it's enough respect as like a Hollywood vixen or whatever you want to call it? Like yeah. one of the hottest women to ever grace a screen was fucking Tia Leone in Bad Boys. 
Yeah, she's um, hot. Yeah, yeah. Holy jeans. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Well, that's why they cast her. Hey, don't 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 shit on don't shit on my amazing thing I'm trying look to say here. She look was look fucking amazing. Stepfather coming to the table. Calm Holy down. Holy hell. Yeah, calm down. We know you met her at like, the bar. Dear God, man. T. <laughs> no, Leone and Bad Boys was holy shit. That was wow. Yeah, she was hot. You guys just go away. I'm just going to look at these for a while. Holy balls. Zinis, enjoy. Yeah, T. Leone, man. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Not enough respect goes to her. I don't know why that came up in my brain, but it did. Wow, Willie, it's a great list. I would put Ricochet on there too. Dude, I got to watch it. Again, it's on my list of movies I need to watch. Uh, John Lithgow was a great villain and does great cat and mouse with Denzel. I knew it was Denzel in that. You guys rock. You fucking cool, rock, man. Willie. Ricochet. What we do all the time as guys on the toilet, we not hit the fucking the bowl. We ricochet off You don't want seat. that. You don't we want ricochet that Ricochet off the seat, sir. It's a bad, that's bad news bears when it happens. While wow, Willie also says better performance to you personally. Number one, De Niro and Cape Fear. Number two, Hopkins and Sansa of the Lamps. Number three, oh, that's tough. Bale and American Psycho. Oh, shit. Number four, Spacey and Seven. Rank them one <clears throat> through four. <clears throat> okay. Shit, that's for tough. me, it's going to be, uh, for me, it's easy. I, I, it's Hopkins and Sansa of the Lamb. I think he set the, I think he set the stage. I agree. De Niro after that. Then it's going to be Bell and then it's going to be Spacey. Because I, I feel like if you're gonna look at that list, like like Hopkins literally set the the goalpost for like how to play those type of characters, and everything after him was just you know like an imitation in some way. Christian Bell, you can see. I mean, or, I don't think that I think they were completely different characters. Well, how about let me finish, bitch? <laughs> how about this? Don't but disrespect no, Christian Bell. You yeah, whore. you put some goddamn name. You know, you put respect on the name fucking hopkins because without <laughs> hopkins none of these motherfuckers would ever had it but either way he's not the first person to play a psycho yo that would be a fucking uh what's his name perkins but nonetheless my point being is that hopkins set the standard for what it was like to play this type of character in the 90s going forward not and moving on from the psycho perkins shit where it's like i'm just a misunderstood guy that runs the motel and nobody knows that i dress up to my mama like that's the difference. The difference is, is that after that, that you get a lot of movies like Seven, American Psycho, De Niro, and Cape Fear. Is it the exact same character? No, absolutely not. But at the same time, you can't say that Anthony Hopkins, in the uh, what he did with that role and that character and in that movie, didn't inspire a lot of other actors that got those roles to be like, yeah, I took a lot of inspiration from how he played a serial killer in the movie, and I'm a serial Spacey, Bell, De Niro, all of them. De Niro may be a little bit more of in his own like category, but at the same time, absolutely, dude. If you look at Hopkins, he was smarter than Christian Bell, but he's still a fucking psychopath. He doesn't give a shit about life. He's sociopathic. He's egotistical. He's narcissistic. He's smarter than everybody in the room. That's literally Christian Bell and American Psycho. So you would go Hopkins, and then what was your second one? Hopkins, De Niro, Bell, Spacey. Hopkins and Dears. Okay, I'd go. I'd go Hopkins number one for sure. Because again, like that fucking, I've seen it like six times. But it, for some reason, this last time when I really honed in on it, it blew my fucking mind. He was so scary. Uh, my number two on that one. I love all of these. They're all so fucking good, man. They're all so fucking good. I would go Bale and American Psycho second because I just think that was like was really good. he did something nobody's ever done. Like that was a completely different thing uh, than anybody's ever done. And then number three, I would go De Niro and Cape Fear. A, because I think that that movie is underrated as a whole. I think his performance is underrated as a whole in that movie. He was so fucked up and crazy, especially was in a, when he's in the theater and he's just sitting there fucking laughing, just mm-hmm. nonstop laughing. It's so obnoxious, but it's so scary. Um, and I would go for Spacey. He was great. He was fucking amazing. He's like, you're a fucking movie of the week. Um, but he didn't have, he was, he was, he was in the background for a lot of it. So he only had limited amount of screen time. Um, that's the only reason I put him at four, but I would put him at four. But they're all fucking yeah, good. Spacey's That's a great, great question, dude. Yeah, but yeah, Spacey's definitely the weak one of the group. Yeah, dude. That dude, that was a that's an amazing fucking question, actually. Uh Ed John says also notables, boys in the hood. Yes. Hook, yes, child's play three. As a I like Charles Play Three. It would never have been in my list though, ever. I, I did enjoy the the setting of Charles Play Three in the in the military camp. I thought that was pretty fun. I did enjoy that. Um, Boys in the Hood is good and hook, but uh, up against what I already had, I couldn't really put it in there. I think like Hook was a nightmare production, by the way. If you guys don't remember the whole thing, it was while a great movie overall, it, it just didn't really hold up to um 
I, I just watched that movie again like not long ago. It's good, and I think Robin Williams was a gr- good fit for uh, Peter Pan. But man, there was some I don't know. I didn't like Julia Roberts in that movie, and then it actually came out like like how she acted, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. There was something off about that movie, and I never knew what it was. But it was interesting to find out that uh, Hook, uh, that Captain Hook was played by uh, what's his fucking name, uh, the guy from Rain Man. Uh, how can I never remember his fucking name, dude? Dennis Hoffman. Dennis Hoffman. I didn't even know that for fucking years, dude. I didn't know that was Dennis Hoffman, and because yeah, he, he did such a great job and he's such a character actor, I had no idea. Yeah. And then him, they, they, the guy that played me was fucking Mario from Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. And he's uh, done a lot more. Like, don't get me wrong, he's done a lot more. But I've never. I, I, I'll be honest with you, man. I've never been a huge Hook guy. Like, I liked it as a kid a lot. But like when I go back and rewatch it now, I get kind of bored watching it. Like Hook just does not do it for me anymore. Uh, but it was a great movie though. Uh, Child's Play. Th- I'm with you, dude. Like I love the military setting, but I just thought they wasted it. I thought they fucked that up real bad yeah. by the end of it. But Boys in the Hood, I gotta go back and rewatch that. I remember liking it a lot as a kid. Good. Um, J.K. Put your number one from each year in the top ten list last. Uh, we might do that once we get done oh, doing yeah, all the nineties. Yep. Uh, I actually texted Jay earlier. I was like, should we do? Should we do our top 10 of 1991 or should we do the best year of every year of the 2000s? But I think it's best to do it this way. Well, I, I want to do because yeah, we're already started on, down on this train track. So we yeah. might as well just get to the end and then do something later. But yeah, and I think that would be cool to do every year of the 90s, maybe every year of the 2000s. They can, they can make it for some fun fucking lists mm-hmm. for sure. Um, let me stay here with my naked breasts out and for everyone to leave the machine bowers. Thanks buddy. Thank he you, says man. for the channel, my top five, 1990 movies, uh, 1990s movies, number one team in T2 or 1991. I imagine he's saying 1991 yeah. or team in T2 Terminator two. Oh. Don't tell mom. The babysitter's dead uh-huh. hook and uh-huh. the Adams family. That's another one that wasn't on. The I, I almost family. put the Adams family on mine, but I like I, and I know it's sacrilege, but I like Adams family uh, values better than the first one. I like it when, like, like when, uh, uh, when, um, not Pugsley. Um, what's uh, what's his brother's name? The ball guy. Uh, uh, I want to say Lars. I know it's not. What Lars. the fuck is? His, <laughs> yeah, what's his name? You guys know what I'm talking about. Like when he gets like with Debbie, and she like starts changing him and like making him a different asshole. <laughs> and he's all about that fame. And then Gomez goes to the police station because my brother married a woman, and he gets it's Christopher in. Lloyd, right? Yeah, Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, uh, played the brother. And then Gomez goes to it goes. I want because has the world gone mad? I just told you my brother married a bitch. <laughs> he said something stupid like that, and they threw him in the Fester, center. Uncle Fester, thank Uncle you, Fester, uh, Buffalo yes, Bill. Uncle Fester. And um, we- and but and I liked I I, I liked when uh, Wednesday and Pugsley go to the camp, and like the whole. I I think I think Values was really good. I mean, a lot of people don't like it as much as the first one, but Values was good, dude. But yeah, it's it's still Adam Sandler one is still good. Yeah, I, it's one of those, dude, both of those movies. I go back to them. I remember them so fondly as a kid, and I go back and watch them now, and I, I really just don't enjoy them as much as I did then. It's weird, but, like, as a kid, man, every, that song, da 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 Yeah, it's forever. Everybody fucking knew that. It was huge. Um, Gary! Oh, my God. I just found out Luis Guzman from Wednesday in Vice City, and Waiting, by the way, was the villain in The Ghost. Um, he looks really different. Uh Oh, in Ghost. Luis Guzman uh, was in Ghost. Yeah, he was the. I think he was the guy they. Uh, he was. Oh yeah, he was the uh, uh, the 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 guy that he hired, the skinny dude, the the junkie dude that they hired off the street. I got go a lot. He was it. a lot. He was way skinnier in that movie. Like he yeah, had a he had a he had a camo. Not, well, it was like an army jacket, and he's the one that like Willie Willie. Oh Willie, yeah, that was it was Willie. <laughs> I gotta go back and watch Ghost Man. That that one scene fucks me up though. When those those fucking boogity boogities come, come out of the twice. ground, they come for Willie and they come for his best friend. Scary as fuck, man. I know. Uh, Lee the Machine, nineteen ninety one. My bad, my phone acting. Oh, cool. we got you, man. We got it's you. Thank good. you, buddy. Appreciate it, though. Um, uh, D. Mitch says Mike thoughts on the goat Nick Saban retiring today. Uh. <laughs> Man, I hate Nick Saban. I, I'm sorry to say this because I, I can tell that you like him because you called him the goat. I've always hated Nick Saban. He just seems like such a fucking dick to me. Every I think time he's he a talks, wonderful, humble Christian man. What are you talking about? <laughs> he just seems like a dick to me. Like every time, like they'll lose, they'll 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 beat a team and they'll be like, well, "Why didn't you beat him by 40? And he's like, "God damn it!" He just seems so fucking angry all the time. It's like, dude, 
you're like the everybody looks at you as like the greatest college football coach of all time like calm the fuck down somebody will interview him on the sidelines and he'll just like yell at some reporter i it's like dude come on man like Nick, who was taking yourself, he just seems like he takes himself way too fucking serious. Who was he so, coaching? Who was he coaching? Alabama. He's the Alabama coach. Guess who? He guess uh, who's going to go there? Bill Belichick. That would be hilarious. By the way, that would I be hilarious. Be, like Bill, if Bill Belichick gets fired from the Patriots and he goes to a college team and he coaches Alabama, because that's a, at least the elitist that you could get uh, in in college football. Really, at the like Alabama. I mean, you could go to like, yeah, of course, Michigan or something, but Alabama is like royalty. And you go yeah. to Alabama and like it's Bill Belichick. That's fucking hilarious, dude. You you do you do though. You guys are right. You do have to respect what Nick Saban did. What 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 he what he accomplished. Uh, I just I do I do want to call back though when he went to the NFL to the Dolphins and he couldn't cut it and he just left them high and fucking. Well, dry. neither could Urban Meyer. Uh, Oh yeah, that's true. Urban Meyer fucked his shit up bad. But no, uh, as far as college coach, yeah, I think you you'd have to argue that Nick Saban might be the greatest college coach of all time for sure. Even though I hate his guts, uh, you're not lying. There'll probably be an award about him. Uh, DJ Graham, Graham, Graham. Bogus journey gives me hope that death is somewhat like that. Oh, we hope Dude, so. I thought that. I fucking. I would love that. Yeah. Um, everyone knows death isn't good or bad, so I hope we can, we can at least go for walks and have conversations. And he has an accent. Don't fear the reaper, dude. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> hey, don't fear the reaper, dude. I heard that. Um, don't fear yeah, the reaper, dude. yeah, dude. Like you know, like I guess some you know, I, I could see that in, in some way. It's a comforting movie. Is the fact that when they die, it's like. You know, it's just like you know, stepping out of out of one car and going into another car or whatever. It's like you know, all black and white, and it's like uh, you will play me now, or you will stay here in the afterlife forever. If you lose, <laughs> if you want to play that game, because originally when Death came to him, he's like he was going to take him on, and they're like, "Is there any way to get back?" And he gave him a chance. He gave him an idea, like, "Okay, well, here's what you can do." Who knows, man? I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to rush to find out, but I don't think it's. I don't think any religion's got it right. What happens to us after we die? After we die, I, I I really don't. I think it's not. I don't think it's exactly the way that 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 certain religions, any religion, really has laid it out. I we don't know. I mean, you how do you? Everybody that's been there, they don't come back and tell you. Well, I just we'll just have to wait and see. But I think it's I I think it literally is your last word on earth is the first word you say when you die, or when you wake up on the other side. Like the last words you say here, when you wake, you go to sleep, and you wake up. And that's the first word you say in the new life that you're going to. And who the fuck knows? Maybe there is a death that walks around that has an accent that looks like William Sadler and you can play games with him. I don't fucking know. Or you, you wake up and it's it's Ben Steeler from uh, Happy Gilmore. It's like, could I trouble you for a warm glass of milk? It's like, I, you can trouble me for a warm glass to shut the hell up. Yeah, that sounds like fucking <laughs> Catholic purgatory. <laughs> like you're going to be in this nursing home for a while until you get your shit straight. Dude, you're right, though. That movie, the way they depict, the, the way they depict hell and like the afterlife or whatever, I used to always think about that. Like, what if that's what it is? Like, just different hallways of like your worst fears and shit like that. It's it's crazy, like, it's like insightful. Yeah. Well, the end is like, movie was. choose your destiny. He's like, choose your own, you. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets like, and he's like, hey, 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 Ted, yeah, hell sucks. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think it, yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't want to get into, uh, I, like, I, I just had an awakening about certain things, not an awakening, but like, I, I was like reading some stuff and like in my feels and thoughts, uh, not long ago about the afterlife and, and, uh, and and what goes on after you die and you know to be fair like no religion's got it right like they don't like i just I'd don't i don't i don't think it's true um because there's a million different realities of what happens when you die i don't think it's like that at all i think we i think that people i think that your soul survives i do not think you just blink out at all i mean uh even einstein said energy can't be made nor destroyed it just transforms or or moves on so yeah. you go somewhere something happens but I don't think it's like, like, like you're not like, I don't think there's a God out there that is interested in torturing you forever because you didn't believe enough or you didn't say the right words in prayer or you didn't, you know, there's no you way. You said fuck right before you died. Yeah. Well, because yeah. it's like, fuck, my heart stopped. <laughs> like it's, it's, shock, it's shocking. You want me to stick this into my heart? Yeah, it's shocking. It's like, I didn't mean it. It just came out. <laughs> I'd agree with that, dude. Yeah. And JK says, what if we live the same life over and over again? That's reincarnation. Uh, it's possible. Who knows? 
you know, uh, there's a couple of those years I don't want to do again, but there's a lot of those I would. And uh, you know what I would do? I would do the stream again because this was fucking fun. I loved it. And dude. it's fucking fun to hang out with you guys to talk the shit about movies. I uh, can't wait to do 1992. Who knows what will happen? Uh, we might get naked. I'm going to have to go gay. through every fucking movie I pick. <laughs> and like goddamn with a with a goddamn uh, magnifying glass and and an old school Dick Tracy detective lens and hey, make man, sure I, that I, bitch I, came out that year. I think it made the list funner. I don't I don't think it should be so hard on yourself. I think it was funny. I no, think it was no, a good it, time. it makes me mad because it slowed the shit up, and I wanted to get to the next thing. <laughs> It's all right. It was fun. It, it was a good laugh. We all laughed, and that's what we're here to do. Lead the Machine Bauer says, here's an idea skit. Michael Myers as Happy Gilmore. <laughs> Dr. Lewis <laughs> jumps. That'd that be funny, is dude. fucking great. It's like, he goes, uh, hook, <laughs> whatever you, it goes, whatever you ask. Oh, it's, it's, hook my, my, what does he say? That goddamn bastard. Tore, no, what do you Oh, my God, dude. How, I used to remember that line verbatim. Like, goddamn alligator jumped up, took a body out of my head. <laughs> hook my, yeah, I hooked my ball down to the left. We get got them out. Just popped up, took me down in my prime. But I got him. I tore one of that bastard's eyes out. <laughs> we don't have any plans to do any Michael Loomis stuff, but I swear to God, we might fucking do that because that should be we would, funny. We would literally fuck. have to go. The only way that would make it really funny, we would have to go to a golf course and dress in golf pants and shoes and go out. <laughs> like we would pay money for eighteen holes and just go out and every fucking hole. Yeah, film it. That would be fucking hilarious. We should do it. I, I'm down. I'm I do it. I, we're gonna get thrown out. We get thrown off the course immediately. <laughs> that should be funny as fuck. Uh, Gary says I never watch Adam's Family either. Just Wednesday for Ortega. The thirst is real. That's understandable. That is, that is understandable. She's hot. I can see where you're coming from. Uh, not as hot as us though, because we <laughs> have pit stains <laughs> and we're men. Men, 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 menly men, men, men. Yep, and I have gray hair coming and sprouting through my chin hair. It don't matter. You guys I like think it. it looks good, Jay. I think it looks good. Um, <sighs> ah! Jay, I'll see you on Friday. We'll see you guys soon the fuck after that. We love you guys so fucking much. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I had a goddamn blasty blast Great. in the pantaloons. Time, and uh, we hope you guys did too. See you guys soon. See you guys next week on the live stream. Good fucking night. Bye. Sluts. See you.